mm. actually, uh, actually, I will hi highlight. I mean, I will not teach everything lah. No, I I can't, I don't think uh this two three hour can teach everything lah. So I will treat the uh, toast basic, but yet uh important and also yet I think some of you may know the number but may not fully understand the fully the up, full application of the of the number. Okay, start. Okay, this one is my not me lah, my Chinese manga lah. So he say accounting is the business language yeah. so i i don't i don't i don't i don't want to talk much delay delay time already so i skip skip next is for for number right we we would like to want everything should be made simple as as simple as possible right? but not but also not too simple right? actually for the number right uh the most important thing as an analyst or or if you want to as an investor right for most important the number is two for me is two things you have to based on the based on the number you have to know uh how how does the business look like number one is link the link the number to the story and then number two is from the number around how you interpret uh, and then you make your forecast or assumption uh based on the number for for the future outlook of the business so this one is the this one, this, these are the figure. Uh, I mean, still a number. I would highlight uh, for today training. Uh, if it's not everything, it's it's not everything, everything yet. But it's the also is the most important one. So first of all, we will cover these three. Uh, recap, recap again, financial ratio analysis. I think all of you know all the financial ratio, but. Uh, is that uh, is that everything you know about the ratio and what is the ratio highlight for you? I don't know lah. Because today the highlight will be I, I won't teach you about the formula, but I will more on like tell you what is the ratio in the lay in a way lay layman or in a story common sense term lah. But in in terms of formula, right, you can Google search of right? I won't I won't include the formula here lah. So the number one, uh, we will cover the three statement as usual. So the first one, income statement. Uh, so income statement, the the most important thing under the income statement, right? You can see this the right side here, right? Is the uh sample of the income statement P under P and L. So the I, for the PML, right? I will highlight the the most for the basic uh, The most important four four thing is this in the right hand side. Uh. So number one is revenue. Actually, everyone know what is revenue or not? Actually, I. <laughs> It's it's a it's a simple thing here saying it's a external sales, but for me right, uh, revenue right is the is the most important thing, uh, covered in the income statement. Uh, I will come back here for the later three EBIT, uh, net profit and EBS. I will cover revenue now. Actually, first of all, here here a little bit bit on the qualitative side lah. It's not the number side lah. The revenue model, right? First of all, you have to know how is the company recognize the revenue, and then, and then, uh, in terms of, in terms of also, uh, not only the revenue model how the company recognize, also you have to you have to think as an analyst or investor, you have to think the nature of the revenue model of the business, uh, whether this bit, this revenue recognition by the company, right, is a recurring base or project base, uh, and and also in the current. Consider a new edge, uh, technology information and modern edge of business. Uh. also there is a linear or also non-linear re revenue model. Like the like it, there are some picture uh below here I saw for the example. Uh, like for a traditional, we also know how we generate revenue from uh, you, if you open a nasi lemak store or a restaurant, you just by selling your nasi lemak. Uh, then the raw material, then you will know is the rice, the uh, in, in this case, in the picture is the prawn and also the pandan leaf. Uh. But it's in terms of some in the new edge, right, like business side, there are so many revenue, right? You have to understand, uh, like for example, like even like here, we have uh, e commerce. You, usually, how e commerce recognize the revenue, right? You have to also, they have they, sometimes they will recognize from you will see if you read the idea, but they will, they will be like gross revenue and re net revenue uh. because e commerce. It's not sometimes it's selling the item, but sometimes it's, they are putting other party product on their website. 
then they earn commission from it. So in terms of gross revenue and net revenue, right? Gross revenue maybe in incur already the party sales product. Then net and then from net revenue only come into the the post revenue they can generate from the company. It's not the it's not the gross revenue. So in also in bank, right? We also know that, that, that I think last month TK also taught us what is the bank revenue model is by the in, net interest income. And also some company also build in subscription based model like SAS or uh not any software, even even hardware also got also got recurring uh subscription one. Like maybe you and uh like a or maybe a me, me, uh, beauty care program. You sign up a, a beauty care, they sign up a beauty care for one year, but the company recognize the revenue is by is by year one. Maybe you, you give upfront for three years revenue, but then the company only record one year, one year revenue only. So the remaining two year revenue right will be as a liability for the company, right? So you have to understand which of the revenue model the company, how to generate revenue. And finally, also come to a project base like oil and gas or property development. Where a project come right, you have to know how the construction business or how the property developer recognizes the revenue. It's, it's usually by the stage or by phase one. Uh. So you you can see even though they record the revenue in the in the income statement, like not necessarily the whole revenue can come into cash one. Uh. So from here, you have one have to know very, very carefully how the company recognizes the revenue. Usually in the in not one, uh, they will sorry, uh, come. Can, can, yes. Sorry, sorry, can you uh repeat or to elaborate a little bit more when a company cannot turn revenue into cash? Uh that one I will elaborate more a bit. But this one I I want uh, is uh belowing, I will I will elaborate again. But this one is more like you have to understand how the company re record the revenue. Because for example, property, right? You have a you have an empty land. Then uh you want to you want to develop a so let's say it's a block of con condor. But the, the a, a block of condor usually is maybe you need uh three years to complete. But the project come right, you, you estimate the re you estimate your cost or you estimate your your condo can can sell 10 million, let's say. But you cannot. But you can even though your condo is fully sell also out, uh, but you you haven't finished build your condo, uh, but you cannot fully recognize 10 million in your book one. Uh. You understand that meaning? Uh? This one is a, a, a little bit tricky one. Uh. So that's why you have to really see how the company rec recognize the revenue one. Uh. They can pay, they can they can manipulate a long one. Because 10 million are supposedly maybe reporting uh, a a long three years period, or they also can record in a, in end of the three year or even beginning of the first year. So this one is is the is when you record your revenue, right? The cash flow is different uh, compared to revenue one. We go in P and L, right? P and L is more on how you record your revenue or or your earning, but in cash flow, it's more on in cash flow statement only record your true cash when you receive the the time when you receive your cash. So this is a time uh, lagging between revenue and the cash flow. Understand. So uh, other thing is like okay, for example here, I will I will tell you what are the something revenue and cost will be recorded in P and L. So uh, like, like just now, uh, Darren I think asked how the revenue cannot convert into cash because we have cash sales and credit sales one. You, you, sometimes you, you you sell item not only uh, cash sales also credit sales those they, they when there are cash credit sales right they then the company need to record the credit sales in track usable and also and also we have we have also pay our supplier whether we pay by cash or we we delay to pay our supplier because the revenue or cost is recognized in the financial period but in terms of cash term right it's not recognized in the financial period so the in revenue and cash flow, they they can pay allow whether the track receivable period and track payable period. So you say what what we say the in terms of income and cash flow is two different thing. That, that's the thing because the time difference, <coughs> as well as the increase and decrease of inventory investment. Uh, then other than the working capital, right? 
also in revenue and cost in PNL, right? We also have other non-cash items such as the asset revaluation. Re because for example, uh, maybe in in uh, maybe in one year, your okay, for example, you are in nasi lemak business, but in one year your restaurant maybe you own the restaurant, but the restaurant the price of the restaurant meaning the land uh, or the shop uh, increase in price. So in P and L, we we have an asset revaluation. Maybe you increase because your shop increase in price, then you have a asset revaluation in your P and L. For example, increase of uh, one million. But this one is not cash ma. You haven't received in cash because you haven't, you, you didn't sell the shop ma. But in P and L, we recognize already. Or any other write off in payment. Write off meaning like any asset like such such as inventory or trade usable. For example, you estimate you can receive one million cash from this customer. Now, one of this customer bank up already. In the end, you only can receive five hundred cash. Then you have, then you have a uh, in payment five hundred cash because you cannot receive as you expected. So, are all these non cash items are put under P and L instead of the cash flow because they did not they they did not incur the true cash value. Um, sorry, one question, one quick one. Even tax expenses also considered non-cash because you're gonna pay the tax, right? Because uh, what what you see in P and L normally told you see the tax expenses side, right? it's an estimate tax expenses from the company. They haven't fully pay the tax yet because in the where tax the tax agent right got their got their own way to to calculate the tax expenses, whereby the company got their own way to calculate the tax. So only when the tax agent calculate the true tax expenses, then what, whatever uh, the difference, uh, the variance between your company calculate the estimate tax, tax expenses versus the tax agent calculate, uh, they want you to be put under the deferred tax. Uh. So that's why you, sometimes you can see in the balance sheet, the company has deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. I see. So is it right okay. to say that Different tax asset better than different tax liabilities. Uh, actually, I I I I won't see is 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 better or bad lah. It's more of like doesn't matter. The, it, ah, it doesn't matter. But uh, more more important is the difference don't don't occur too too, too big difference ah. Because if okay. you too much right, it's a it's a sense of manipulation ah. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. So, so it we also back to the a little bit based based on the uh, business model. So that's why right you can see currently there are a lot of business. I mean, uh, investor more toward uh, flying to the business model in more disruption and also new new business one compared to the traditional business model. Okay, it, it, even you can see here Apple versus Microsoft. When when last year right we can see. Apple is the largest market cap in the world, but today, right, Microsoft is the largest market cap in the world already, because of the they because of the investor realize the the difference of the business model between Apple and Microsoft because of, of the Microsoft really sticky of the uh, new feature and recurring, uh. and then also Hilton Hotel versus today the Booking Talk and Airbnb, banks versus fintech. So today you can see fintech is a it's a high variation compared to bank and the HR service versus the H human capital management software. Then insurance versus so-called the, the new emergent kind of category of insurance, so-called pack insurance. And also traditional property developer or construction industry versus the, the uh, aerial image te technology. Uh, those can help the construction and engineering to budget the, the cost in, uh, before they start the project. Uh. And then even the final financy, so-called the, the last time release famous uh, single player game versus today the, the POBG total to, uh, to multiplayer game. And also retail versus e-commerce or port of sale system. So you can, so you can see all the retail industry company right, variation is, is, is already uh, become cheap or, or drop uh, because of the rise of the port of sale system and e-commerce. Uh. And also travel agency versus travel platform, healthcare, versus health technology and then drug and medicine versus the therapy so-called the uh, uh more indirect effect and also smartphone with content and apps available so so all these are you have to see this especially the last three years until today 
you have to see why some business maybe in old days they are really good business but but why now they getting really cheap already the, the variation because of the investor have a different preference already so uh so uh part of the valuation uh what do you call this uh uh, how valuable a business is is also dependent on trends and season of how investors view it. Yeah. So part of it is because uh, it's also the market sentiment, also the also the this kind this new business ah, uh, investor starting to realize this all this new business model are uh, the the earning power of of this new business model are much more powerful or recurring than the old business uh. So the okay. variation will be up, up, uh, upside already. Uh. So uh, so I come back to the just now the I think I all the what I still talking about revenue. So from here I I uh up to just now I just want to under uh brief you guys more on more about revenue uh sustainability revenue of a company because because you uh if you don't do not understand the revenue of the company right then the rest of the number you you just you know how to see the number, but you don't know how to how to link the business. For example, uh, the rest, right? That's how I left. I think uh, EBIT net profit and earning per share, right? Uh, I, I can continue from here because I think margin and all the, all the previous number is uh almost similar. First of all, you have to know what is gross profit margin. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me see. I think I I I can use draw something actually gross profit margin I, maybe traditionally you only know gross profit margin is after after consideration of your cost of goods so then you divide to revenue then what is the percentage of such margin actually what i want to highlight here is gross profit margin is more on external and environment meaning what is the company profit look like after considering of uh, external environment and as well as a uh, variable cost or you can say uh, their selling the selling price based on the supplier so uh, this one is more on a external effect uh, which the company not really can compare compared to the operating margin or net profit margin because growth profit is only consideration of the direct cost of the good you, you sold so uh, in, in, if in this case right, you have to see what is the external environment for this company for example some some kind of uh, maybe manufacturing or commodity like company right this their cost gross profit margin will be quite fluctuated. So they this one you cannot guarantee uh, maybe today uh today is 40%, but next year you suddenly 20% one right, because of the, of the commodity cycle. So this one it, it, so if you know the nature of the business, right? The gross profit margin, right? You uh you, you then you only know the nature of the cost profit margin, and where from there they only they only know what kind of variation you are looking at. Because if you look look look, look today forty percent, then you you if your value based on forty percent right, then you are you will miscalculate the company already. So it so it uh for cost of energy, most important is how well the company do compared to commodities in terms of the external environment, variable cost, and also what kind of price they can sell. So usually uh in premium and luxuries uh segment of the business right usually the gross margin is very really high one because they have core so consider they have the branding to sell the price leadership so uh come back uh the next one the next one is i think the most important margin uh, for me is i will look at this margin compared to uh is instead of other margin uh, instead of gross margin or the net margin uh, for me this margin is the most important because this one right other than they consider variable cost, like that's what I say in the gross profit margin, they also consider the overhead cost. Uh, meaning the other than overhead, 
the headquarter cost and the other fixed costs. Uh. For if if you want to know better what is EBIT margin, right? It's like for example, if if you are operate on on a nasi lemak restaurant, the gross gross margin is how well you uh you can manage to source your supplier from the for example your pandan leaf, your rice, your prawn, your nasi lemak sambar. <clears throat> based on and, and then from where you source this supplier, then how how well can you sell your price based on your nasi lemak quality, la. But this one is also more on external, la. But if it, if you want to commit if it, actually, like, it's consider all the costs uh, like your rental of the store or restaurant and also your staff cost and 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 as well as the utility cost just her is more in terms of EP right? if after consideration of fi fixed costs uh, that's why usually uh fixed costs right we will say what is the fixed cost is normally the SGA selling general and manager expenses is more on the fixed cost so that's why we want to the SGA as lower as possible for the company, especially when the company is scaling up. Is the company scaling up, right? The SGA is co still continue going up, right? Meaning the company is getting co complicated or getting it's not getting easier when it got, go larger. So uh, other than the gross margin, SGA, AP margin, and the last one is the net profit margin, right? Net profit margin is only what is the between EBIT margin and net profit margin, right? Uh, is the sorry, yeah, where is the screen already? Okay, between EBIT and net profit margin, right? Is only the take into consideration of the interest expenses or or income, right? and also the tax. So this is the difference between the EBIT and net profit margin. Net profit margin consider consider everything like the interest expenses and income. But why I look at EBIT is in terms of net profit margin like, because EBIT uh, because net profit margin this one is not the core operating idea. This two thing is not, not the intern in part of the operating item of the business like. and moreover right when you study company across global not in a single country like right, because different country different tax rate and also different interest rate from the bank they can borrow. So when you can consider consideration of the global company, right, uh, these two things is various. Uh. So we will like to look at a bit more important the, than the uh, net profit margin. Uh. And then some more like, that's not that uh, Daniel asked a good question. This one is estimate some more, it's an estimate expenses only. So, uh, Next is ROE. Okay, ROE is okay. ROE is, is a very really important uh, ratio. Uh, okay, actually for ROE, uh, I don't know whether you guys know. I think most of you guys focus on margin, but sometimes uh, the the they are not not really many people focus on ROE uh, because margin is more like your how is your can your revenue cover your cost or not. This one is more on profit margin, but ROE is is can the business generate income back to the back to the shareholder or not? More or like because because uh, in a normal way we know uh the basic formula for ROE is equity. Uh, sorry, the the budget already. It's the net income over equity, man. This part is the our shareholder equity, like, meaning what is the shareholder capital capital like. then based on your your, your income to, combined, compared to the shareholder equity, what is the what is the what is the return this year for for shareholder? So it's the basic we know one. But uh I today I will teach you the two point. Like. Maybe you you guys know. Actually, what how the ROE formula right is actually based on this three formula. First one is the net profit margin. Uh, multiply the asset turnover. And multiply the equity 
multiplier. Okay, this one is the originally, what is the RE means? So you have to, uh, from here I will tell uh, the quite qualitative perspective. And ROE is, is the factor of these three variable. So the first one is, if it's know the net profit margin, meaning what is the net profit? How well is you control your pricing environment? Your pricing power toward your business. And so this one is, of, the first one is the margin. But because margin is only part of the ROE only, still got, we got, still got another two variable in terms of how well you can uh, increase your ROE or how well the company do to perform a better ROE. The second one is the asset turnover, meaning the asset turnover formula is sales over total asset. Uh, yes, correct. So yes, as you see here, it's more like how 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 well the company use the asset to generate sales. Uh. This one is more like the, re the revenue and net, net profit. Uh. So, here is how efficiently you use, use the asset to generate the, the so-called the sales of the company. Because this one is only considered the revenue and cost. This one is more considered the balance sheet item, which is the asset, how, how efficiently you use the asset to generate the sales. So basically, either you do a few asset to generate the same amount of sales, or you, or you use the asset generate an additional amount of sales. And then finally, the equity multiplier is how you use your equity to leverage to to generate the higher 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 ROE because equity multiplier formula here is the your total asset how how much is financed by equity is in terms of uh, instead of uh, borrowing so this one is more like the you have for one investor or one one of the business owner you have to you have to judge what is the level of your total asset to finance to finance by equity yet can generate higher return in terms of asset turnover and profit margin? So usually, right, if you if you make it clear, right, I will tell it's like this because first of all, uh, it's net profit over revenue, So it's then. As a turnover is revenue over total asset. Mm -hmm. Then finally, it's total asset financed by equity. Mm -hmm. You can see here if you if you cut, 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 then you know this is ROE. You, you, you guys know? Um, Adrian, one yes. quick question. Well, um, I mean, the way I see it is that the 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 second factor, which is the revenue over total asset, I mean, mm. uh, can be not always, but it can it can uh, what you call it can be used as one of the one of the efficiency factor when you compare across the peers, right? I mean, in yeah. many cases, uh, not not always, but uh, in many cases, especially those uh, heavier relying on assets one because uh, like you say is a uh, how efficient to use the asset yeah usually as yes, uh for one one good example i can think of is the supermarket the grocery store we all know grocery store have a very single tiny margin on here one so usually if you if you, if you found all the grocery store across the world right, they only have like one to two percent margin on here but but you but what but, but only they Although they have only one to two percent net profit margin, but sometimes you can see, especially like I think Walmart or Costco, they have a they have a double digit ROE one. Why? Because they, they, this one uh, they are very really high on this one. Because uh they are very uh it's a business uh, where where very really crucial on inventory turnover. So inventory turnover also in also in, also implicate on this one the total asset turnover. So each business right has a has has its unit. Uh, you have to think in the business side. Uh, actually, I have to I have to can can say like this uh, because I can see some of you right always focus on this one, uh, but sometimes when a 
the business does not necessarily focus on this one. one. Some business really focus on this one. one. So uh, if no question, I can proceed to the next one. Oh, wait, 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 I have a question. Okay, go. Yeah, wait, please ask. Just now, just now about the tax, right? Mm. Uh, you say tax expense is a non-cash item, right? Uh, it's not non-cash. It's a it's it's a it's a cash item, but it's an estimate expenses by the company. It's not a real cash expenses. Uh, can they goring one? Uh? Um, it's sub it's it's very subjective for this question. Okay, because like uh, for example, right? Let's say you have a uh, uh your company making losses, then then you got tax benefit, ma. Uh? Yeah. Right? Okay. Correct. Yeah. Then what are the implication of that, uh? It's a it's a very normal thing, is it? So let's say I've got tax loss, I got losses, then I got benefit loss, so I got profit loss. Mm -hmm. uh. Then in, in future you you when you when you have positive profit back, right? Then your tech, then your previous tech, tech benefits you have to adjust back. Lor. Then maybe uh, you start, then okay, for example, okay, I think I think at once nanotech, I think everyone knows this company. Right? Because they are still in accumulated loss one. Mm, mm, mm. Based company, on the balance sheet, right? Based on the balance sheet, right? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. They are still in accumulated loss one, meaning the, the company still haven't generated enough of profit uh, to to, con to convert the... I mean, to convert into a return earning lah, instead of return loss. Lah. Mm, mm. So... You, you, you can see as the last two years, right, they are already starting to generate uh, quite high of uh, positive profit. Ma. So when they generate this profit, right, you can see in, I think in the footnote or in the latest financial statement, you can see they have a very really big tax benefit. Right. Uh, this, right. Is where, this is where they starting to adjust well because they have already starting to got profit already. Ma. Mm. So so they starting to need to pay the tax already. Mm. So the tax the tax benefits actually means nothing on it. It's just that you're adjusting back the the mm. uh, uh balance sheet uh, something to say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So it's non-cash and then they are just adjusting it back. Yeah. Then next year is the real one uh, which they need to mm. pay the tax. Mm. Okay. And the payment you can see in the cash flow statement, right? Yes. Or Okay. Even even though the cash flow statement you can see the payment right, that's also not necessarily the tool as tax because later on right when the tax agent right go and go and go and calculate recalculate right, then they, maybe you have they, they say oh you have pay more or pay less then you have then that's why you have see they are tax payable or tax tax receivable in the balance sheet right? Oh, so, that, so that's how the thing arises uh. it's because they. Uh, they estimate, but they didn't estimate correctly. Then the tax agent mm. come, then they ar then arise this uh pay pay less than they got tax payable la, something mm. like that. Mm. Okay. Okay, go back here. Um. Okay. I'm I think. Really sure. <laughs> okay. Yes. If we call our is the mother ratio, I think now you know now you guys know what is why our is so important already. So next, uh, I will start on the balance sheet item. That's how it's already P and L. Now balance sheet, right? If we will cover, I think some of the, uh, I think only few number here. I will see for the for as, as a start, this few number is the most important to see to look at, lah. Uh, other than you look at one by one item. So the first one will I will look at cash and cash equivalent. Uh, I think we all know what is cash and cash equivalent. Uh, meaning the the currently the num the num the amount of cash the company has in their bank or in hand. Uh, but cash and cash equivalent, right? It's not only cash in bank. It, they also uh, include the convertible, marketable security. Uh, meaning this company maybe has uh, some some of cash invest in the short term deposit, or even uh, money market deposit. Like maybe it's a short term bond or or short term borrowing kind of as uh, investment. Uh. Uh, so apart from apart from here, right? It's actually this cash and cash equivalent, right? It, if a company is large enough, right, usually it's uh, handled by treasury one. If a company is still in small size, right, so uh, everything is everything is still managed by the CFO. Right? 
So when company go bigger and bigger, right? Then only the cash and cash equivalent will throw to treasury. So treasury is, is, is like become a mini cash uh, portfolio manager in the company. Right? So uh, this one is out of topic already. This one is more on like the job scoop already. So uh, come back to here. Okay. The, the more important is cash and cash equivalent, right? One, or thought we want the higher, higher better, right? One need to consider and look at how much of the total of the cash and cash equivalent, right? It's really, it's really, really liquid one. In talk, uh, other than the company put a lot investment into a short term, short term, uh, short term deposit. Uh. If the company put too, uh, put too much in the short term deposit, right? Then you have to question why this company put a lot of emphasis on the short term investment. Uh. So other thing is uh, return earning. That's how I like. That's how we say. Uh, this one return earning is like it's a company accumulated earn, uh. Over the past year's track record, what what is the accumulated earnings the company has? So we want this return earning, right? Of course, the the higher the higher the possible. I mean, over the years, the interest earning is increasing. Right? The only one thing the return earning will be negative, or or dropping. First of all, is the of course you make a loss of the company. When the company making a loss, right, then the return earning will will be uh dropping. Right? Second thing is. Uh, when the return when the company announced dividend, because dividend is pay out of return earning one. So you you when you see a return earning, maybe uh like for example the ASIA group, you if you see the this the latest of the balance sheet, right, the return earning is is uh drops significantly because ASIA return a uh, one large large chunk of special dividend to to the shareholder already. So it's it have to I mean. You have to understand why it's drop or why it increases. Uh. Don't because of the number drop or uh, then then you say red flag. Uh, I guess, uh, you have to understand why it drop. Uh. Uh, okay, okay. I, I think I forgot one thing also. Also, just back to the uh ROE. Uh. ROE, of course, we want the higher the better. Uh. But you have to understand ROE high, right? It's based on what effect to make the ROE high. Uh. If the ROE is is increasing because of the decrease in equity uh, or decrease in return earning, uh, then is this a true organic ROE increase or not? Then one has to have to understand uh, it's not like it will, it will higher or very good, uh, but it's actually uh, the company, the company, the equity dropping one. So you have to understand where is the what made the ROE higher. Uh, Again, again, and again. It's the it's the it's the matter of why and I interpret. It's not the it's not a one way straight answer. So uh, hey, we have to know all the all the asset is financed by liability and equity. So if 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 uh, if you want to build a business, either you can finance your asset by equity or liability. Ma. So equity is is all the equity is the net worth belong to the shareholder la. and then borrowing and then borrowing here right we we we, we can see a lot of liability like, item in the right hand side here right you see what uh, normally not as a basic right we know we most uh look at concept as is the interest paying liability la, whether it's a short term debt or long term debt so another thing is a uh, net tangible asset i think this one uh also i think i don't know whether you guys uh heard of it or not right? That, that tangible asset, right? It's a company consider only the company true tangible asset after deduct all the liability. Because shareholder equity is means by the asset minus liability. Ma. It's then the what is the company worth is the shareholder equity. Ma. But here we want to see what is the what is the uh you can see the tangible asset belong to shareholder one. It's not only the intangible asset. Because right. In terms of bank bank collateral, or we want to borrowing for bank from bank, or when during a bankruptcy or liquidation, right? The bank will not consider your intangible asset. Right? So you know, the the most important asset is also back to the net tangible asset. Right? Of course, uh, this this one also a lot of debate debate theory in terms of uh especially current now right? because now it's more on like all the light asset and the software businesses rise up right? 
which which they are require less lesser and lesser tangible asset. So this one is also very debatable, right? But for 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 now, right, we have to consider net tangible asset first, lah, because we have to see after the shareholder minus a goodwill and intangible asset, right? What is the leftover of the tangible asset? Because if the goodwill and intangible asset too high, right, when the equity minus the goodwill and intangible asset, right, it's become a negative amount, right? Meaning the the shareholder literally own nothing tangible asset from the company. So when the company break up, right, or or anything happen in the economy, right, the shareholder literally own nothing, man. Because it's a negative negative asset already. So be be wary of this lah. I mean, uh, okay, next, okay. That's how is the. That's how we talk about the what is the item. Uh, in the P and L and cost ma. Now we also tap. I uh we also talk about item in balance sheet which will impact P and L and cash flow. Ah. Number one is the provision. Ah. provision is like a, it's not a true cash expenses. But it's a liability in a company. Yeah. For example, you because you like you you are you are toy manufacturing, you manufacturing you manufacture one one million toys this year. But out of one million toys, right, you the company make a provision like maybe out of this one million, one one percent of this one million is defect toys. Although it's not it's not a really defect, but the company already made a provision. Uh, it's a liability, and and then and then subsequently. Will be expense expense in the PNL. It's a non cash expenses, but it's also it's a true cash. I mean, it's a non cash expenses, but it's a kind of a expenses for the company. Yeah. Because the company is trying to estimate what are the liability for the defect item. And then uh, again uh, asset valuation write off in payment defect tax. Uh. Because when when the company property is recorded one million in the balance sheet, right? Next year become two million, right? Then the extra one million will be recorded as a additional profit in P and L, Same as other like inventory, trade receivable, even deposit tax, etc. Then, okay, the I think there are some new new thing here, right? I think you guys not uh familiar. First one is the deferred revenue. Because like for example. Subscription model. For example, you subscribe Bloomberg Terminal. Maybe you you one shot give the company uh let's say it's three years three years uh three years income uh three year three three years income lah. For example, one year is one hundred care. You can only give three hundred care. The company up already receive your three hundred care three hundred care cash, but the three hundred cash three hundred care cash right cannot directly under the revenue one because. In the in the accounting period, right, this company only can recognize 100 care under PNL, but the 200 care cannot recognize it because that is the next two year thing, right? So the but the company already already received the cash already, so the 200 care will be recorded under balance sheet as a liability. So wherever you you when you uh, analyze a company, right, you, or when you see the look through the balance sheet, right, when a company have Deferred revenue, right? You have to understand uh what is the different revenue, how he how he recognizes this deferred revenue, and also it's an indicator of showing the future revenue of this company. Yeah. And then other thing is like contact cost. Contact cost is a is a opposite of deferred revenue. It's like you recognize the revenue already, but you haven't received the cash. And then, uh, and then one and last but not least, the finally the item, right? I think this year, this year start especially in Asia, especially in Malaysia and Singapore. Uh, this operating list, like, uh, this operating list, you before, before this uh, operating list is off balance sheet liability one. It's a liability, but this liability will not in your balance sheet one. But this year starting, this operating list will recorded under liability. Because of the accounting policy rules change, so that's why you can see a lot of companies start suddenly the the liability spike up, the uh, debt is suddenly spike up, because of this operating list. And then what is the big difference between operating list and capital list? Like capital is a like it's a leasing like you leasing a machine or a equipment, you have a term one 
capital list like you 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 list the equipment and for 10 years but at the at the end of the 10 years after you finish pay the list like the equipment or the asset is belong to to the company already so that uh that's where we call capital list but op operating list like even though the, your list is 10 years right after after 10 years you list right the 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 equipment is still not belong to the company it still belong to the lab uh, the lessor so this is the difference between the operating list and capital list uh. um question okay. um on operating leases right usually mm. it's found in the notes and uh but what i usually see is that you know a they have some sort of projection on like operating list uh, yeah. in the coming year, in the next one year, next two years, next three years. Um, yeah, correct. I just want to ask, right, uh, how do you usually look at this kind of uh, projection? Like, um, because these are the minimum payment for the lease, it also means, uh, uh, what I understand is that it also means uh, future minimum expenses in operating leases. Um, but what else would you would you get from there? Would you understand from this uh, projection? Actually, it's 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 it's, it's uh, nothing much about this projection, right? It's not nothing to worry about. One, right? you just uh, but one have to you just have to always remember this company still has this liability one. Other than the normal liability in the balance sheet, they still have to pay this operating list one. But uh, I I think I think this year starting right. You no longer see in the not they will move it, be uh become part of the balance sheet already. Okay. <laughs> because uh, uh, what what what, what uh? Okay, I think I think this is also a little bit out of topic. But what I want to say is uh, off balance sheet liability uh, is a is a is an important thing uh, because when you as an investor or or analyst right usually we, we we thought this company has only this kind of amount of liability but actually it's no it's more than this kind of liability it's, it's because of this off balance sheet they are didn't require to record under under the balance sheet so when things got get, get agree right usually it's a, suddenly you see wow boom it's suddenly a time bomb in front, in front of you boom the, the company suddenly lost so much money because of of this off balance sheet. Op operating list is still so far, it's still okay, it's still manageable. But why about actually what kind of company usually have a lot of off balance sheet, right? It's a bank, right? Of course, it's bank. Right? Because bank and especially investment bank, right? Because they engage a lot of derivative instrument. And this all these derivative instruments, right, is off balance sheet one. You don't know the company enter or a uh, uh, credit default swap. You don't know the company enter or uh, uh, put up against the housing index. You don't know one. Only when the company made a made a loss or made a gain, then you don't know all oh, this company uh, off balance sheet liability one. You can't even find them in the financial notes. They won't disclose one. Are there any example for the uh, operating list or not, and the capital list? How do you say what, what, what example? I mean like real life example. It's like the machine you, you list, or whether, whether you want to buy the machine or you want to list the machine. Oh, that's all you You look at your office coffee machine. That's the operating list. Okay. You ran, 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 or even the printer or I don't know. Um, they eventually become yours, ah. They become yours. Yeah. So they need to. They need to, uh, do the depreciation. No? The one is under capital list, oh? Capital list. Yeah. Operating list never become yours, one. Ah, they will become yours, one. Okay. Next, we go over to here. I think all this ritual we all familiar. Uh, so I therefore I I won't teach you about the formula. So for current ratio, right? Yeah, one have to one have to bear in mind is uh current ratio is your current asset. I mean your especially is your current the most liquid thing, uh, the most liquid liquid asset. Uh, that means meaning the 
those asset very fast can convert into cash in less than one year or so. So this current this current show is how much you can in turn, in case you have liquidity insolvent or in illiquidity, uh, this current asset can help you to convert it and solve your uh, contingency in the short term. Uh. So that's why we want a want a company as liquid as possible, but also don't too liquid uh, because when the current is too high, right? Meaning your your you are not really efficient in managing your asset. Uh. And then quit ratio is uh we after after the after not consider uh take take it off the inventory only because car car current ratio is the all the current as item uh, but quit ratio is all the current as item but exclude the inventory because inventory you still need time to turn into cash when the company in a fire sales position right the inventory will usually you, you will you will sell really really under value market price one right? So we will exclude the inventory. Then you see what is the, uh, what is the how how liquid are you, right? So basically, this is the all the current ratio and quit ratio, right? And when a company is actually in a software or like asset, right, the company has no inventory, right? It's only the current ratio and quit ratio is are the same one. So and then the third one is the net debt to NTA. Right? Okay, that's why we also already talked about the NTA, right? which is the net tangible asset ma. you uh, you have to you have to uh, see uh, because usually we 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 we, we use the ratio as, as a debt to equity uh. but now we use debt to NTA. some is net debt net debt meaning the debt after minus all the cash of from the company if the borrowing uh more than the cash of the company right meaning they are the company is net debt lah. it's not a net cash position lah. of course we want net cash position ma. But in terms of when we have net debt, right, we have to compare to the net tangible asset, meaning we, we can see how leverage of this company. Of course, this one is you can see all the number here, right? more than one time, 0 0.8, 0 0.5. Right? It's just a general general rule on it. It's not a mass, uh, it's not a fixed fixed number. Uh. All, have, all have to go back to how well you understand the business. Uh. Because like net debt to NTA, right? If you if you notice that like, like I think Disney, what what Disney? Uh, this net debt to MTA, what this is, I think has more than three times, uh, meaning 300 percent leverage against the equity. Is uh if if you if you if you if you type that for wrong here, right, then you can say uh, what this is can throw already. But why why what this is can able to leverage to this high amount? Because what what this is the brand name is so well, uh, the brand is so good. Uh, the, where the bank can't even possibly think, eh, it, it, Disney can cannot impossible to can uh cannot repay the borrowing one right? because the the what is its name alone can generate a lot of cash flow. Eh? And then uh and then we come to here the 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 bottom four is the so called the working capital number. First of all, we have a uh, inventory days, meaning when when you invest in your inventory. On day one, how much you can turn turn it back from your inventory? How much you can you sell your inventory turn it back to cash? Uh? So uh here here right we usually I think it's a rule of thumb why I put one hundred and eighty days right because if you if the inventory put too long right if it may it it may not not good uh. I mean the inventory maybe is like a obsolete obs already maybe it's a expire already. If too long, right? Also, one have to worry about if the emulator is, is is getting longer and longer, right? Then you have one analyst has to expect next year, right, or or coming financial period, right? There will be an inventory right right off in the PNL. So, uh, other than this, right, I think I think you have to also judge the level of inventory. I mean, because inventory is include uh raw material, what in progress and finish good. Right? You have to see what are the inventory level, which one is the higher in this among these three inventory level. Right? And then, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You continue. You continue first. Okay. And then, okay, other than this, right? This one is the rule of time, less than 180 days, but there are company more than 300, 300 days one. Right? Because of the because of the inventory is a large, a large uh, it's a large ticket item. Right? 
example automobile automobile right you, you can't even you can't you can't you can't see the automobile i think automobile is more than 300 days one if you see an automobile company and then secondly is the luxury luxury items like uh jewelry uh, like the gucci prada ham uh, lv handbag uh, those are also more than more than 200 300 days one because of the, the inventory is uh the inventory work is quite slow for this company because of the large ticket and also the luxury item yeah yeah yeah, what, what, you. yeah. okay um regarding on the inventory uh inventory breakdown right so you have the raw material you have the uh, intermediate you have the finished goods up mm. um why why i usually see is that if the business uh having more sales right or getting more and more right uh trade receivables trade payables increase inventory will also increase one mm -hmm. uh like like uh overall raw uh, raw material and finished goods yeah but uh, but then there is also another sub notes uh, in the inventory that says uh some portion of the inventories are carried at a uh, net net uh what you call net realizable value oh, okay or uh, or something like right it says uh, uh less the uh, marketing costs and uh, all the things are so does this actually means that the net value that the the indicated by the inventory right mm. is basically they sell at no gain basically they just uh you know zero margin kind of sell or what uh no, actually you, you all the inventory is are recorded based on cost one. It's not recorded based on the selling price one. That's why all the inventory you you, you will move into cost of sold one. Then only from your selling price, which is the revenue minus cost of sold, then only you know what is the margin. Okay. 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 So okay. Okay. Okay, one more question. Um is there any indication like uh, increasing of uh, raw material and uh, decreasing of finished goods uh, or vice versa? Any changes of the move of the material indicates uh, uh, better signs or something? Usually, uh, uh, increase in raw material, for example. Uh, you could usually uh, increase in raw material is a good sign, uh, meaning the company uh, is prepared it has a lot of demand. That's why they have to invest in a lot of uh, raw material to prepare the inventory because they, the company already has expected high, high demand this year. That's why they invest, invest in a lot of raw material. Usually invest in a huge spike in raw material usually is an indicator of good, good demand. Uh. But one, have, one also has to confirm whether the next financial period, the sales also increase or not. Uh. But if and you then, have the goods yeah. of uh, finished goods, uh, yes. that you yeah, worry worrying, right? Because uh, it's like you, you make the goods and then you have to keep it in inventory for next year or something. If you have a lot of finished goods, then usually it's, it's, it's the, amount, the the amount continue to be out on finished goods. What you mean, huh? It means the um the finished goods amount is increased or decreased? Increasing. What if? Increasing in finished good line is usually uh is a sign of the company over supply. Uh, they 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 produce too much inventory already. So the uh if in uh, in this case I uh, maybe it's over supply already, but meaning the company cannot cannot sell as they expected. And and, there, and therefore right, because if 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 an inventory expire or obsolete, right, then they will inventory write off in the next So mm -hmm. they, 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 all these things will impact your PL. Okay, okay, okay. Of course, as a general general rule, right? When you see the inventory test spike up, right? for example, this year 90 days, next next year you see inventory test it become 150 days, then you then you have to see uh maybe something something is wrong already. One. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, great. Okay, good one. Okay, the next one is the receivable data. Receivable data is meaning how fast you collect your cash from your customer. La. It's simple, as simple as that. La. So this this indicator also 
、呃、show your bargaining chips power,、uh, your bargaining power with your customer. So it's the of course the lower the better. Uh, in uh, when when the receivable just uh continuing to increase uh, over the years ah,、uh, then you, then you have to worry ah,、uh, because maybe the company uh do some manipulation already lah,、uh, meaning they they recognize the sales too fast, but actually the cash is not receiving one. Or sometimes the、uh, I think there is a term you I think you guys find right there is a term called over invoicing over in, over invoice. Because uh, this a this a scenario like this. For example, for example, the company December December year end financial period December 嘛 so they have to report the financial report to the shareholder maybe on on January or February. So during December, right, when、uh, the company if if we want to make the number result look good, right, suddenly December they call the customer. They they ask the customer say, uh, you want to order your next year. Next year, uh, order from me or not? So, uh, so if the customer order from you, right? Because the customer order from next year, one, but does does not belong to this year, one. But the company book the order into this year to make the figure look nice. So there, therefore, you can see the sales increase already, oh. But actually, the receivable case is is also increased as well. I think mean, this one is have to we have to also take. You have to uh understand ah、uh, how the receivable those days come from, and then the, and then the last but not least is the payable days ah,、uh. and then the payable day, payable days meaning uh, you how you you use how many days to pay your supplier lah,、uh, generally means, um, this one also a lot of thing to debate ah、uh, payable days. Also, is is if a good company we of course of course we want to delay. You, if you show you can delay your payable as long as possible, is of course it means you have strong bargaining power with your supplier. But sometimes also maybe you are lack of cash, so you cannot pay your supplier. So that's why you keep on delaying. So you have to very very uh depend about where whether the payable date is a reasonable payable date or not. But of course, right? If you see in terms of the, I think uh the the so called new The sub new new pieces are like the software or especially on the S A S or the Booking dot com type of Booking dot com type of business model, right? You can see the payable days usually more than one year one. They have very strong bargaining power with the supplier one. That that's that's why this Booking dot com and or all this sex sex software lah, like maybe like Microsoft or、uh, <coughs> uh, Adobe Reader, this Salesforce ah, or even Paycom ah. You can see why the why the they why they have a lot of cash flow can flowing in the in the balance because of this they can prolong this payable days ah it's it's part of their business model already ah so last but not least is the cash conversion cycle cash conversion cycle is is the the for I think is the total total the of the inventory days receivable days minus payable days why is the why is the cash in this all working capital cycle ah. We want the lower the better lah. Of course, the negative is the is the best lah. When the when the when the cash flow conversion cycle is a negative, means you literally no need in you no need use your own cash. You 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 literally use your use your supplier cash to invest in your inventory, and then you receive cash. Then you pay your sup supplier. The the whole process does not require your, your own capital. So、um, next is now we are at the cash cash flow statement. So I I think I think later on I think after this this I think the following slide I, I will tell you a a a clear cut like why is the why is the difference between cash flow statement and income statement. So for here cash flow statement right generally we I will highlight few item. First one is the cash flow from operation. You can see right net income is the is from P and L. Cash flow from operation is is a、uh, is is a item in the last last part of the cash flow from operating activity. What is the difference between the income and cash flow from operating activity? Is the is the actually is the like just all the all the thing I said just all the non cash expenses and also all the working capital. 
So so net income only only tell you how much this company earn this year, but cash flow is telling you how much this company receive in terms of cash this year. So and, and the next is the capital expenditure. Capital expenditure, right? Usually is, uh, is the PPE, uh, property part and equipment. Uh. How much this company is con is continue want to reinvestment in order to to generate additional unit of sales or maintain the current sales what is the maintenance capex they want to do invest so uh m a m a a y also actually m a m which is the merger and acquisition right also under the cash flow from investing activity one and then what else under the cash flow from investing activity right usually is the purchase of or sales of the asset which is it's not the operating item uh, because you sell your plant or your property or your equipment but this is not part of your nature of your business so this all this you will will, will part under investing activity one uh. so what i have to what i have to uh, uh i think the more important number is how much cash generated from the operating activity minus all this capex include the MAA, right the rest is the free cash flow uh. what is the free cash flow meaning is the Meaning that this free cash flow right, is no longer needed to maintain the core operation of the business. Right? All this free cash flow right, is meaning is really be is a if the shareholder take out all the free cash flow, it will not impact the business earning power. That, that what what I what I what I means about the free cash flow. So usually all the variation methods, whether you use discounted cash flow, discounted earning, or or what or what variation uh, is based on the free cash flow one. Uh. Because only free cash flow is the true indicator of the company um, uh, value. So uh, under the financing cash flow, right, it's more it's more or less it's telling you how the how the company uh, do the financing cash flow this year, whether they issue or reduce borrowing, or they issue share or share buyback shares, or the they pay dividend. So um okay here there are four four ratio I um, I don't think it's a new new ratio right? no, not four ratio it's more indicator to tell you whether this company to a basic it's a basic filter to filter this company whether it has a I, I won't say it's a red flag it's more like you have to keep be careful this this these are four general indicator to tell you whether this company has this kind of uh, indicator or not. First one is the uh we want the EBIT always higher than net profit because EBIT is a better profit than net profit as I mentioned that's how EBIT is uh is a core operating profit when the net profit is higher than EBIT right you have to raise your eyes bar already right? why the net profit can higher than EBIT right? I think I think normally it's all in the other income and other other expenses so because analysts like or the broker right they all focus on the bottom line. So when the net profit uh high high uh high right, they usually will adjust the target price. Right? So the management will take whatever it takes to, to massage the net bottom line one. So we want pay in mind here, we want the EP is actually is higher than the net profit. Right? So next is the quality of quality of earning. Okay, this part I think uh some of you guys may, may be familiar, some, but some of you guys still not fully understand why why quality of earning, why the quality of earning is, is the formula based on the cash flow for operation uh, over the net income. Why we want this cash flow for operation more than the net income. As, as I mentioned just now, net income is telling you what is the amount of company earned this year. And then cash flow is telling you what is the, what is the amount of cash the company uh generate this year so in a general rule right of course we want the company to generate cash as higher as possible right? compared to compared to net income and then what is the consequences when the company quality of earning will be below one uh? normally below one right either the company is in a exponential growth uh? i mean they are in a very growth Goes to uh, growing stage uh, because when the company has a in you know, a growing stage, uh, they invest a lot of things in inventory 
or or even in the receivable or the payable. But if if this case is still manageable, if you understand the company is in a growth stage, but what if the quality of earning fall below one is not because of the working capital? If the quality of earning fall below one is because of the all the funny thing like for other income, other expenses to mark up the net income, then this one you have to be wary to be worried about. Uh. So here I will ask you what is the operating cash flow versus the reported earning. You can see this is the net income, and then the right hand side is the cash operating, right? Then difference between cash flow and reported earning. An income statement show whether a company made a profit, and a cash flow statement show whether a company generated a cash. Profit that does does not mean cash flow. Profit are based on accrual basis. Profit include credit sales and cash sales, as I mentioned, I think earlier on. Cash flow measure only two cash flow, which only include cash. Cash sales uh, for example, like the subscription model. Uh, for example, you, en you enter a massage, massage center. Uh, and maybe the massage center is uh, telling you, oh, today you today you become our member and you sign up 10, 10 times package, right? Uh will be much more cheaper compared to your one uh one time call-in. Uh, but you pay you pay the 10 time package. Uh, maybe maybe you, ten, you pay the 10, 10 time package is 10 10 care, but this 10 care, right? The company already the company already received your cash. Therefore, in the cash flow statement, right, the company will record fully 10k in the cash flow. But in the profit statement, right, the, the profit may not recognize the 10k because the 10k is uh not yet fully service the customer. Right? They will they will recognize whether when the when the customer customer uh serve up the uh go in up 10 times already, then only the this 10k is full recognized under profit. So that is the difference between cash flow and cash flow and reported earnings. So that's why in a, you, you can see uh why why some company the cash flow is really loose. Yeah. And then and then that's why some like like sales like Salesforce. Uh, I think uh, I think not uh, I think not of many of you know Salesforce. Uh, it's a technology company, it's a also it's a sex sex uh, uh software as a service company. Why the Salesforce cash flow, right? I think it's almost two or three three times more than the earnings, uh, because it's a subscription basis, ma. Company, company, company give him the cash and also the floating they can play, ma. And then, and then the Salesforce P ratio is priced at one hundred one hundred and fifty times, uh, which is which you see, wow, P ratio super high, super over value based on earning or not. But you, if you see from the cash flow perspective, right? He is only like I think 40, 40 or fifty times on here. So you have to you have to see how is an analyst or how is an investor value the company. It's a value a company based on cash flow earning. It's not entirely every company must be value based on cash flow, but different kind of business model you have to know. What is the two two generated uh cash flow engine? From this company, then from from there, then only you you will understand and you know how to value the company. So here also mentioning profit measure at the type of revenue recognition, cash flow measure at the type of cash correction or pay. So profit include non cash expenses and income. Cash flow exclude all non cash items. So it's a fine definition meaning between cash flow and reported earning here. So the third one is the quality of asset. Uh, this one is a, uh, this this ratio right is a, uh, is my consider is a is a new invention uh, by by me because uh because why is we have a quality of uh, uh, income but we also need to careful to take care of how much of the asset of the company is really I mean it's, it's a genuine it's asset uh, it's a really core asset that is a uh, Generate, generate the operating income for the company one. So usually we will see a company called asset is the property part and equipment, inventory, cash and cash equivalent, and trade is trade is stable. In case of the new ash, right, you can consider any intangible asset. Lah. But we, I will I will still separate because I want to see how this intangible asset. Lah. But other than this, right, all the rest of as other asset right. Is considered is a non-core asset. It's not really important asset to to the to part of company one. So the problem here is all the other asset, which is non-core asset, right? If the if this, all this non-core asset is a 
getting higher and higher value in, in terms of the total asset. For example, for example, more than 50% of a so-called, uh, okay, more than 50% of a te technology companies, uh, let's say it's Facebook, uh, if more than 50% of the asset is an investment property, then you have to file, then, then you have to file yourself in a in a very quick picture mark why this Facebook company uh 50 percent is invested in investment property uh, instead of the instead of their their uh their Facebook the social media uh. so why you have to very 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 in 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 your analysis of the as balance sheet uh, why this company invest in this 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 kind of asset you have to understand uh, you have to you have to check and take why they invest into this kind of asset and then uh, last but not least is the intangible asset or total asset uh. as i say intangible asset can be a trademark software pattern copyright and goodwill and then uh one uh i think i have one one thing have to be wary is goodwill Goodwill is the most toxic one, uh, I think. Most toxic item among all the intangible assets. Uh. Because other trademark, patent, software, all this copyright, we, we could understand because it's the company require this asset to gen so that they can uh, guarantee the sales and or, or generate additional of sales. But goodwill, right, is a very sensitive question because what you have to know what is goodwill. Uh. Goodwill is when a company A buy company B. Because normally we buy company right in terms of uh in terms of accounting, right? We buy based on the based on the equity value one, meaning the company book value. If the company equity is one million, but this uh use two million to buy over the company, because you you might you two minus one, there is another one million left. Because when this when you buy over this company, right, this company entire parent ship will be consolidated with air parent ship. Right? So but there is an extra one million you cannot you cannot put anywhere. Right? So this one million you have to put as goodwill. Right? And then this goodwill once once you record, right? What you record of goodwill, right? It will, and then it will only it will this goodwill right, is can be only down by impairment and we will not increase one they won't won't be increased one this goodwill so the whether this goodwill subject to impairment is based on the auditor and the cfo of the company they will they will really remeasure based on year on year whether this goodwill need to impair or not when the company impairment this goodwill right then it will impact on your p l Meaning your PL, your, your earning this year will be dropped because the company take away the goodwill already. So whether subject to this goodwill, whether it's a good goodwill or not, is depend the earning power when you sub when you acquire a company. If you expected this, you acquire so for example, you aspire this company, right? If you expected this company can generate one million for you every year, right? Then the goodwill will stay on. You, you continue right on impair, right? but what if suddenly one year this company cannot generate one million? Let's say suddenly only generate one eight hundred k only. Then the auditor of this company, right? Audit, auditor, right? Maybe will will ask you this, since the company only can generate eight hundred k. Then they based on this eight hundred k, maybe your your goodwill is not worth as much as this value already. They will the auditor will ask you to impair your good, goodwill already. This is where the dangerous come in. So if a company has a has a large sum of goodwill, I think when a company has goodwill compared more than 30% of total asset is belong to goodwill, it's quite toxic. It's a time bomb, I would say. It's a it's a time bomb already. Because when when Sui, right, then when the economy downturn, right, then you have to impair this one amount. For the most recent case, I think it's Kraft, Kraft Hines. Uh. One of the portfolio under Warren Buffett. 
this one the the goodwill is the goodwill is like i think 70 percent of the total asset then because of the caffeine that does not generate the, the income as expected then this one suddenly impact off. Uh. So you can see the share price drop a lot for crafting crafting. Uh. So we have one have to be wary of on the goodwill. Uh. So Adrian. Yes. For goodwill, right? Let's say uh, you buy the company and then expect the company to earn one million, all right, just now. Mm. And let's say if suddenly the company earn two million, eh, nothing will happen. So uh. the goodwill will, will, will not mark up one. Uh. Also, the goodwill is forever there for you to impair only. Uh yes oh okay <laughs> it, it's just that it's, it's like a premium that you paid uh, to, ah. the, to the other company yes mm. okay i think that's the end is it oh still got oh still got okay okay See, you, i i i tell you the site has 10, 50 oh, halfway, sites. halfway. <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> I think I think I think I can go fast one right, if you want I go fast because why I go go quite slow because I want you guys to measure every understand the basic the layman uh, it's not yes, the yes. number uh. yes can 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 carry on yes, you okay. got time. Okay. Now, I have the whole night for you Daniel huh? has the whole night for you <laughs> take your time take your time okay um okay first after we complete all the three segments, the most important basic number already. Then we start now uh, a company capital allocation behavior, right? You can see based on the track record in terms of number flow one. When the number flow flow, right, you you are know what is the management intention, how is the management manage the the, the money uh, for, for the shareholder. So this one is the ideal, ideal capital allocation. Uh. It's not it's not saying if the company not following this conform is reflect it's not saying it's not it's not saying like this but it's an ideal meaning a company has an ideal capital allocation usually generate operating cash flow and then uh they they will invest in appropriate capex and or appropriate m a then they issue dividend payout paid a receipt paid out the debt and also share buy back at at reasonable share price uh, not the overvalued share price share buy back, uh. And then finally, the cash flow, cash flow in right is from consumer, meaning the the revenue generated from the outside, cash flow in is back to the shareholder, banks and company. If this is the top, uh, right, is the top area, totally top area. When the company is uh, generating negative cash flow, uh, and then and then because of because of the negative cash flow, so the company need to issue borrowing because no no cash already, man. Issue borrowing, issue issue share. Or, or even earn a share buyback to boost up the share price. Uh, and then investing cash flow, right? The company uh invest as excessive capex, meaning over supply already. You you don't have this demand, but you invest so a lot of, on, on this capex or to buy that insufficient capex. You you need this kind of capex to maintain your company sales, but you didn't invest enough of capex. Or or you or, or because of your excessive excessive capex, right? Then cost you, you you next year want to sell your assets, uh sales or of your asset. And also overpay MA. Overpay MA is as I said, so if you overpay MA, right, the goodwill is will be really high the goodwill. And then finally is the shareholder instead of the cash flow in for shareholder for bank and company, become the shareholder bank and company uh pay out to majority shareholder, high pay employee, supplier, and and other non-related expenses. So uh okay, I, I think this one is the additional case study where I when I read the company track record. I think uh this what I what I want to say is like you have you have to understand uh management behavior. Uh, some management behavior may be too aggressive or may, or some management behavior may be too conservative. So as an investor, you have to whether you have to ask yourself ask yourself a question. Uh, whether are you aligned with this kind of management behavior or not? If you can't align with this management behavior, right, then you can you then you not not need to invest in this kind of company one. No one forced you to invest one. So uh, I have the one of the good case case study here. I I I, I read uh is one of the very unusual capital allocator of a management company. So this company, right, the first ten year of this company, right. 
the the highlight. I, I will talk about the highlight. The CEO, M M A over one hundred thirty company. Uh, in a decade, this company M A one hundred and thirty companies. Ah,、uh, which is very、really、aggressive M A. But you can you, and then some more right. How they how what what are what are the financing they use to buy buy all these companies right? They all the while this all the while this man should right issue share to acquire company. Ah,、uh, meaning is a is a most expensive way to. It's not even issue borrowing. It's issue share. Meaning they will dilute, dilute your company, dilute your、uh, sorry, dilute your share of the wealth if you cannot, if you cannot generate the the income expected. So this this CEO right issue share to acquire company. But right, what what I say is serious right because this company right, all the while they this uh CEO acquire right is the all the profitable growing company. So this this measure right measure the earning per share growth right is more than the share out outstanding growth because when you issue shares right your share outstanding keep on increasing one right. So this the the measure has one only one goal in mind, measure the earning per share higher than the share outstanding. So by then right then the then the earning of the shareholder will not be diluted. This just like the first ten years, this management uh. Use this kind of、uh, method to generate wealth for shareholder. Then the second ten years, right? This company slow down already. They don't. They don't want to focus on the M and L already. After one hundred and thirty company acquisition, right? This company suddenly turn into turn into focus on the operation in the, of the company instead of the aggressive continue M and L. They turn into the they focus on decentralization. To decentralization organization, they put a、uh, one. Each of the each of the company they sub uh they acquire right, he put one head under this company to focus on the operation and then focus on the cash flow generating, not the reporting, uh, not the reporting earning already. So you can see ah,、uh, just now right, he focus on earning per share. Now he focus on the cash flow generation. Then third year right, this company right, the CEO right, focus on aggressive share buyback because. Because he see it, because uh, all the while when the company become so conglomerate, right? The usually where a company is a conglomerate, the P ratio or the price to book ratio for for the company is a is a is a is a low is in on the low 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 end one, ah. Because it it's also part partly is because of the financial engineering, ah, to make the P ratio become low, ah, for con conglomerate. So because the CEO know. His P ratio is low, so his the CEO spend two point five billion for the next ten year keep on aggressive share buyback. So you you know at at the end of this ten years right, this company reduced the total share outstanding ninety percent. It's like it's like what you see in the is a in the advanced nanotech currently, but the advanced nanotech also cannot cannot compare to this. Ah,、uh, this one is reduced ninety percent total share outstanding. So become the the share become extremely, extremely few in the in the market. So the because of the share buyback, share buyback right, the earning per share push up already. And then and then the next the the fourth ten years right, the CEO uh starting to consolidate the the portfolio holding. So because uh previously I I told you right they have one hundred one hundred and thirty company, then this company start starting to concentrate. Must must the one hundred thirty company into five only five company, and then spin off those company right, uh where they deem already high value. So they spin off, uh, uh spin off meaning right, you IPO one of your subsidiary, meaning you completely sell off your subsidiary to IPO. That is what what、uh, what we mean spin spin off. So this company, uh this manager CEO right, very good. He know which subsidiary is high valuation. So he want to turn in turn the subsidiary into cash. So they spin off another subsidiary, and then while、wow, focus concentration of portfolio portfolio holding. And then in the in the final ten years of this CEO ten tenure right, this then only this CEO starting to pay dividend because of the because he say now my valuation is high, no M and opportunity, no more reinvestment opportunity. So finally he decide to pay dividend the first time ever in twenty six year this company pay dividend. And then during the economic recession, right, this CEO repurchased his stock by 
by that financial, meaning you, you go and borrowing from bank to trade buy back at a interest rate low environment. Because because in, when, when when economy recession, right, the interest rate usually very low one. So this company took, took a change, high financing and buy, buy back his share. And then during after after trade buyback, right, when the interest rate go up, right? Uh because interest rate is a reverse proportional relationship with the bond price. Right? When the interest rate high, right, the bond will go will drop one. Vice versa. Right? So when the interest rate low sharply, right, the bond price form, right? the CEO did not believe the interest rate will likely to continue to rise. So he initiated a buyback of the bond. And then when the bond uh, rise back, right, he retired for a bond. Meaning he, he, he get the capital gain from, from selling the bond. Right? And then which is they they use this with the company pension fund uh, and then which was not taxed on investment gain. So, so can you see this company, the capital allocation rate is very aggressive uh, for the last 50 years. Not and not every shareholder or investor has the appetite to, to consume this kind of management behavior. And then as a, as a result, right, for the last uh, 30 years, uh, this company has a CAGR of 40%. So this company is actually this uh, is a call this company Tenantai Technology Incorporated. So you you know this company is is a conglomerate, you, but when you study it along right, you 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 may know because this after this uh, at the end of fifty fifth year right, the CEO already uh resigned from the company. Already. He want to retire already. So oh. this is the this is the company, uh this CEO man. You can see those the so called really aggressive. So that's why why I want to why, why I want to bring you this case study, case study right? Because all the number you you learn just now or, or the way I I uh, I I tell just now right? You have to you have to be really flexible in terms of to link with the management behavior and the number. It's not a fix fix and that that one uh. So I think actually this one is uh, more of like it's a it's a trend it's a trending. Uh. I want to I want you guys to know the uh, based on this company you, whether you know how how is the management behavior and whether this company is a sucks or good company. Pop quiz ah uh. ah okay 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 I, I I give you guys five minutes uh. I go drink drink some drink some water first uh. But first ah uh, why the EB on two one four is only six ah. Uh? Wow, EB on 201 for six million. Sorry. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. The fuck? <laughs> okay. Okay. There is a way, but later you, you, you can highlight first post up, post, post thing, things you think has a, has a question. Okay. Your review answer already. <laughs> yeah, I actually I I, 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 I I didn't want to go fast already. La. Actually, this company right is a is a fraud company Ah, uh, yeah, so, uh, very fraud. I don't know why a, they it, all the account numbers eh. so weird one. It's a fraudulent company la. As you can see, the below three items as as I just I say already the basic filter. You can see already something wrong with the company asset already la. 
So you, you, you if, if you see here, right, why does why the company do, do not have a 201 at result, right? Because it's it's already suspended at end of 2017. <laughs> so next, right? Uh okay, this company, I, I think you guys know what is the company, but where you have to bear in mind um whether you have to see this company before and after is very one big change uh. Very dramatic change towards the last three years, suddenly. Actually, one, 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 you, uh, I think one have to understand if you based on 015 alone, we will invest. Uh. Of course, not a lot of negative ROE. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I review the answer. The answer is actually this company you guys all know once. A2? Uh. Yes. Hey, A2 negative ROE. Uh. How does that even yes. happen? In 215. Uh. Never mind, in 215, the share price still poke on guy, is he? Yeah. I mean, that's why you have to invest since 215. Uh. If you invest only, uh, only after uh, the last two years, it's already left. Uh. You ask Richard, uh, hey Richard, you invest in 215. Uh. Oh, wow, champion negative now. Uh, no. This is uh, another, 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 so I, I don't, it's considered cost skills. Uh. He has to identify the tipping point of the company. Uh. For this oh. company, right? For this company, the tipping point is the 215. Uh. Is the tipping point uh in the number? No, right? Yes. I mean, uh, of course, priority based on number alone, no lah. You have to link with the business model. Uh. But why? Why I actually, actually want to want to show you is because because when you see the number too good already, right? Then usually the share price is already reflect. So you have to you have to you have to file if if you if you really want to make a huge you scan from investment right usually you have to file right right at the top moment when the 215 discount of company oh this is bakara anyway so like if you really do encounter a company like this then what would be you know the uh what do you call that the telltale sign or ratio or whatever that you think this company can be turned around and you know has a as a very good promise in the future. Actually, based on story, based on the number or not, right? It won't reveal all the answer. La. The number will, will, will tell you oh this company is 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 currently quite sucks. But you have to you have to consider why the number now sucks and why is the moving forward strategy. Uh, I think I think the tipping point here is because at end of 215, I think A2 has the license to uh, China. So it means they are penetrating a new market, lah. Yes. It means they are safe by China, lah. Still got what? So, having said that. Uh, I recall long, long time ago you mentioned about uh Xiaomi, is it? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so do you mm, think there's a similar story there like that? Um, mm, that one is uh quite difficult to answer. I mean, yes and no, but for me it's more to know now lah, because the number of the Xiaomi right, uh, is <laughs> it's really different compared to Air Two or Apple One. Lah, I told you. Tell me not one right when you see the number right you completely panic one. <laughs> okay. Agent, agent say very toxic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right. Means at the end, uh, yes. at the end, at the end of the day, it's business acumen, lah, right? Like how yes. much faith yes. you have in that business, right? Mm. And also your futuristic, visionary kind of uh, belief in the business model and what it can be done in the right at the right in the right market at the right time. Mm, correct. I think as an investor, I think you have to the, 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 the number one in the number one thing is how confident and how well you know the business model, lah. So he, you see, uh, uh, I think this one is, I think it's the last company because I don't want to put too, so much case study. Uh. I think this one is the last company. I think you can see based on this company, right? The number of loan, uh, do you think the company is is, is very good? Uh? First of all, this company has no, has no cash flow one, uh. no cash in hand one. The entire cash in balance sheet is, I think, is uh, from borrowing or issue share one, because the company does not generate cash. Wow, so good at this company. How to say so good? So good lah. Just so generate cash. Doesn't <laughs> generate so good, still so good lah. Okay lah. <laughs> the ROE increase because they increase the debt man. Don't know. Based on number, it looks ugly. Yeah. Looks ugly, right? Then I review the answer for you. Right? This good company, I think we all know also. Wow, it seems so good, right? Oh, 7,000 <laughs> percent eh, wait. <laughs> you know why I put up this? Oh, I purposely picked this few case study one because I want you guys to know, right? Uh, Number does not tell everything. Uh. Yes. Number is a very different story indeed. <laughs> number plus perception, the story that people tell themselves. One of the things you can see, uh, what, what is the cash flow negative here, right? Because the company continuously aggressive investment in the content. Because for this kind of uh, streaming media, right? They, now they compete against the market share quite fiercely. So uh, one has to has starting to invest into content to drive down the cost, or, and also they have the own copyright. Uh. So Netflix is aggressively invest in the content. Uh. So this one is a uh, nonsense. Uh. I think, I think, I think. Okay. Okay. For the last part, uh, I think what we come to the last part of the money, uh, the the today, uh, so this one is uh, more more into more into the variation. Right? I think from variation here, I will teach a very simple and layman term of variation. Right? I won't teach you the financial modeling one. Right? So first of all, we all know each of the company has its own market cap. Right? Market cap meaning what is the market value of the company? Because in, in that's how where, where I say equity is in terms of book value. Book value meaning what is the current book value recorded in the company balance sheet. But that's that does not reflect the economic economic value of the company. So economy of value of the company is where we see how is the market price the company, la, and we call it as a market cap, market, market capitalization. So market capitalization is the formula of the share price per share, as you see in your uh your stock code, la, then multiply the number of share in outstanding in the company. La. So I think uh, a lot of so-called uh, beginner, la, they don't know how to differentiate market cap versus price per share, which one is cheaper. So over here, I have uh, two examples for you. One is Apple company. Apple has a 208 uh, USD price per share versus special hardware where class A, class A which, where one share is 300 and 312,000. So, in as as a uh, I think this one I told you, you guys uh, you which one do you think is cheaper this company? <laughs> Anyone? Apple lah, Apple cheaper ma. I can buy ma. Why are you? Why are you talking guy? You talking in Google? Berkshire, you... Berkshire, Berkshire, three hundred k USD. Anyone got lah? One point two million eh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> 
Can I even buy that? Hey, that is steep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is this where where the I think almost all the normal investor will tell you that this apple of course you put up apple, but but if you really see right, because if you think like uh, you're buying the whole company, actually if we are uh, looking at the market cap one, so you you can oversee her, you can see the market cap for apple is nine hundred and six. 60 uh, billion compared to Pressure Hardware, where only 500 billion. So you can see actually Apple, Apple market value is higher than Pressure Hardware. So, so, so you, if you if you want if, in a in a how to say, uh, usually we have a back, back testing to say small to medium cap company has a higher growth compared to large cap company so you so uh, like you if you compare like apple to apple right apple is only like three three billion market cap three or four billion market cap. I, i'm not i'm not i'm not, I'm not remember already but if 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 let's say apple is is priced at two dollar and apple finally like like, like allow 30 dollar then you say apple is expensive then you then you then you already miss the conception because Apple is only three or four billion market cap only, compared to Apple, nine hundred billion. If if the only based on number or not, you can see Apple still has a long runway to grow from. Yeah, but Adrian, yes, I always find it hard to uh, evaluate the the market size of the company itself. So for example, let's say you say Apple, right, three billion mm. market cap, right. But let's say what if they are operating in a in a market that is, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 billion or 50 billion. That, that is nothing compared to Apple. Ma. Apple is in a different market. Ma. I mean, okay, let's say we talk about uh, Apple's market, uh, the AI, the tra translation market. We, we you cannot, uh, there's no number for us to pick, right? Like, oh, what's the market size? What do you say? What's the market size? Even you need oh, the market yeah. cap, you need the market cap based on the, uh, Peers has a relative them. Mm -hmm. You don't expect a property company to suddenly become a 900 billion Apple company. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? yeah. Yeah. Hence, you hence you need to have a a, a gauge. That means like how, how can we gauge uh the rough sense that a company's uh, uh market cap can can go up to JP is back, back, back to the back to the business model. Uh, oh, uh, to, to them, my topic is more on number, right? Okay, this one, this question is very simple to answer. One, it's the market share or not? Uh, do you think Apple market share will continuing continue continuous in, or is the market share already picked as of current? <clears throat> yeah, how to answer? Oh. Uh, no one can answer. <laughs> can you hear me? Uh? Ah, sure. hey, okay. Richard, hey, finally you're here. I thought you slept already, you know. That's why I see when I when I can finally look at your slide, ah. Uh. Wow, Adrian said last last one already. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really slept, oh my god. Huh? You really slept? I I I kind of know. I kind of just joined in on it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Basically, he saying he slept and then he woke up. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But anyway, to answer your funny question, uh, yeah, I think you know market share. Why are you asking market share versus market cap? I don't understand how does it link to this slide. Um, no, because market you share you need to, you need to, you need to do all the surveys and everything, right? Which no one in the world can hundred percent know exactly why is the market share, right? Because mm. no one is telling you to answer, right? So right. this, this, the market cap of a company, the size of the company, uh, is basically unlimited one, uh, unknown one. Uh. It's also based on the business cycle, uh, the, the cycle of the money, uh, whether they are, the company is in, still in growth stage, maturity stage, or decline. Be because, uh, sorry, I just had this question, like, let's say Apple 3 billion, right? Who, mm. who are we to tell is a medium or a big?
Actually, we we you you Sorry. we we won't get so specific specific one, but it's a general rule, right? Three billion is considering uh belong to uh medium end of medium one, not yet con not yet into large cap. I think I think I think Honyang don't understand the concept of market cap, is it? Or you understand? I don't know, yeah. Pangyang. Hmm. You seem hey, sorry, sorry. You understand, but you just lag. Keep I don't, don't understand. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I was lagging. I cannot hear just now. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I mean, do you understand what, what does market cap mean, uh, actually? Uh, share price, oh? Your share price. Huh? Share price multiplied by share, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so, I mean, I think Adrian also mentioned what is essentially if you today... If you are Warren Buffett today and you feel like buying happened today, you need to come up with three billion. Ah. Uh -uh. Uh, that's it, what? That's that's then you say what you mean by unlimited. unlimited. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's just basically people's perception or the the the, the price tag that people put towards that company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, correct what it is what. Okay, okay. <laughs> then some more if you if you are really like what what I mentioned just now, if you want to be like Warren Buffett and buy over, for example, Apple, right? It's more often than not, you need to offer some kind of premium. Otherwise, people won't want to sell one. So, for example, if it's $3 billion, sometimes maybe let's say if it's $1, for example, then that's why you see people need to offer like $1.15, 15% uh, or 20% kind of premium so that people will like, okay, 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 okay I sell you today. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he was talking about valuation. So yeah. Oh. Valuation oh. is, is, is different. I mean you if you want to see whether Apple can grow from three billion to thirty billion and another ten burger, right? Of course it's back, back, back to the business model. Right? Mm -hmm. No one yeah, can yeah, yeah. no one can for sure one. Yeah. Was that your question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was my question actually. Uh, three billion to thirty billion now. Uh. Means and that, that's that's unrelated to market cap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That's quite, <laughs> quite confusing. Oh, Richard, question. Yeah. Why? 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 The current earnings, current profit, whatever lah, whatever figures you can come off lah, is giving you this valuation already, and then you, if you're able to so called multiply it by ten, you are already able to achieve uh that kind of valuation already. That being said, that being said, uh sorry, market cap. That being said, when you multiply until ten times already, you because Apple, for example, Apple is also a considered a growth company, ma. So by the time you reach 10 times, the valuation must also, by the time you reach 10 times, able to, for example, grow another 10 more times. It means your multiplier, right, you're saying? Yeah, the multiplier must be there. This is this is the problem of growth companies. So uh, a lot of times, those people that very hang want to invest and study growth company and hope that they last forever, right? They don't catch this point. It's, it's a very good example uh, because I, I for example, I'm, I'm, uh, I uh, invest in the A two company, so I very well know. I see before the patterns are like that one. If you miss a little bit or you don't, this is why I always say growth companies always have a, have a peak one. There's a there is a, some kind of ending one. Then yes. by the time you hit this ending, what they transition into stalwart law, right? Mm. The, the moment you become a stalwart, I think your valuation immediately will adjust back down. One. Mm. It means you are talking about you want to maximize your profit using the multiplier effect. Uh, and then... Because in terms of growth, you are buying to into the future, right? Mm -hmm. Right now. Yes. So imagine if suddenly this growth company cannot grow anymore. Or grow slower, la. it doesn't say grow anymore. La. Actually, you see the Apple here, you, you know, right? Apple P is only 17 times. Yeah, la, yeah. La. Uh, Facebook yeah, also, la. last time it was it's a good example. La. So that. So so there is a there is 
every company sure will slow down one. It's it's impossible a company will grow forever one. I don't know if you want to talk about market share. Yeah lah, this is some a very good example lah. So if you think about Facebook, I think virtually every person you know, uh, is using Facebook lah, right? Not uh, it's quite hard to find someone that is not using in at least our part of the world lah. So imagine if they still want to grow, will be for example, uh, China. And what North Korea maybe, <laughs> all those other smaller countries. But or then, the new, or the new segment, uh, the what Libra, Libra coin. <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, then, then, <coughs> then you see and, if and that happens, if, let's say it really works. Yes, then the market will apply a different valuation to it. This is what example the AI is doing. That company is it? They're, they're transitioning. From, yes, they're transitioning from from an education company into a. Every company wants to. I mean, it's hang lah. When I, uh, because it was being discussed about in the uh, capital precession course also, they themselves they claim that they also want to become a tech company, and everybody claims that they want to transition into tech company. Company hang ma, very trend right? If you look at uh, Asia, what are they doing? Hmm, yellow. Right. Is same thing lah. Yellow. Because the tech company gives you a much higher valuation. Much, much, much higher valuation. Like I think earlier on, when I was still listening, uh, Adrian did mention some part of this. Uh. Hey, yeah, Richard. Yeah, the question that I asked about pop okay. popularity of the trend and the season, which is affected by the interests of the investors, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Correct, correct. There is, the, I think in the keyword, is called what sector rotation, is it? I don't know why it's it. Lah. Oh, that means that uh, there's yeah. a season, there, there are like times like season, uh, investors very hang some type of industry. Is it? <coughs> uh, yes, yes, yeah, correct. Win, no? right? Win, what? right? So, mm. so uh, Win, every uh, sector will gain certain time. Uh, then actually, uh, I, I remember I saw this post inside the uh, VIC. Someone posted before. This is a very smart post, which is uh, uh, someone actually noticed that in terms of, for example, to, to, to gain in terms of share price or what, right? It's not only that means just the company uh, doing well itself. There is also the part where the investors apply a certain form of, for example, multiple to the company itself, which means the sector. Lah. So if both are growing, then you get rapid expansion. No? If you yeah. if it's just the earning on growing only, then you get your so called ten bagger lah. Then if you get your valuation growing, it will go up. It will maybe also get five or ten bagger. But then the problem is the valuation also may come down. Ma. I mean in terms of the multiple lah. So the uh, the worst thing is you uh how to say find some company that is growing, growing, growing. But then suddenly, you don't know why <clears throat> the whole industry, uh, all the investor like suddenly like scared of the industry. Right? Why well, then you see a share price do not drop for what reason? Charge them a bow for? Yes. Then 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 it may become a value trap, uh, because then everybody already phobia of this industry, uh, So then they will scared. They will just avoid. It, and then you just jam there. Uh. So basically, you see as, as you see what my, what what Richard mentioned just now is actually in my slide uh, for the share price to move either earning or PE. Yeah. So okay. if uh, if earning if earning move up, P drop, this is it's also not not it's also that doesn't make sense. Lah. I mean it's also not use. Correct. Mm. Correct. Yes. This especially yes. especially for growth growth investing. <coughs> yes, growth will be a very painful one because suddenly the, you will gonna... the P ratio, oh. yeah, the multiple suddenly you drop a few times, a uh, few times already. Already, are uh, very very pain already. Mm -hmm. Yes. So so this is my. Hey Richard, mm. quick question. Right. Your A two milk can. Mm. Yeah. Bought in 2015, 2016, 2017. <laughs> 2016, I think. 2015, 2016, lah. Uh. Hey, lah. 2016, uh. I think. Oh, there is very. Remember to turn, lah. You saw it started to turn, lah. No, I was slow already. I'm supposed to buy at twenty or twenty or thirty cents one. I buy it late already. Mm -hmm. I buy at one point six. Yeah, 
but I, okay, A, A, A2 is an extremely good example. So if, if she's actually, actually want to share. In fact, I want to share with you guys uh, personally in between is that actually I already exited A2 already uh, recently, especially after they come out results. And then I do a, a second, uh, what do you call? Second level thinking, yeah. <clears throat> so what happened is, uh, for this company, <clears throat> uh, uh, I did write some notes. Uh, what I studied, what I find out uh, uh, having issues is, number one, they actually, this company are right, growing super well in Australia and China, right or not? Yes. And then they are still growing super well in Australia and China. And the main thing, the whole damn thing about this company growing so well only one country only China lah. even Australia going well is because people from China go in uh, what do you call uh, e-commerce ma, taiko ma. okay <clears throat> so uh, or during this whole period I've been riding this trend of this uh, this taiko uh, thing lah. and this this trend also hit 10 times already but what happens is uh, they are trying to find ways to expand uh, market share in the world like what i say you know yes, you are a growing company you need to grow ma. so they grow they try to grow uh yeah <clears throat> i mean like yeah other than i mean big big uh countries lah, which is uh like like they just say lah, us or or you know europe or something lah. so if you think about it right which countries uh like to drink milk one infant formula one don't want to say fresh milk one. fresh milk very normally infant formula one uh, probably Europe la. okay maybe la. okay Europe. so they try to expand UK mm. and then what happened is they it's see that right. they, they they think it's like waste of time and money la. okay they expand and then they give up they give up you know then mm. they expand in the US then they see because US is just fresh milk only so what they did is they continue they want to ramp up their marketing and everything but then what I saw is uh very funny pattern. They number one, they are all just actually depending on China alone to grow only. Then number two, they want to expand into US and UK and all these places. But come to think of it, like if you're a more right, would you pay premium for just milk? Uh? We think uh, mm. will you? I don't think so, you know. Seriously, I don't think so. Because I'm more if a more culture from young, uh, from a long time ago, uh, what what they normally eat, bread, cheese, milk, la, they... milk. Oh. Chinese people, eh? rice, and all this no. funny, funny stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. okay. So you can see you now why, why Chinese people want all this stuff because it's, they think like, wow, uh, uh, how to say, uh, it's like wow, very king man. It's like can help my kid grow, my kid get smarter, everything lah. Related to infant formula, why everybody want to spend so much money on powder? It's because they think that wow, it helps their kids a lot lah. I think okay. Chinese are so new lah. <laughs> Asians, Asians. Yes, it's Asians. Asian thing. This is an Asian entirely. Is Asian uh, pushing it up on? Okay, so uh, if they intend to expand into other markets, uh, this one is already. They tried last year and the last, I think eh, last year and then uh, they are not really doing well. Lah. This is the second year. That's why I give them so-called one more chance to do it. But then it seems like they uh, they are a bit messed up. <clears throat> okay, this is one. The number two is actually when when the last year, right, the new CEO came in, it's a lady. Ma. Yeah. Okay, this lady, right, came from Qantas. That's that's my number two problem. I also give her one chance for one year already. When she came in, right, the moment she came in, she go and make the share drop until eight dollars. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she come in the time, ah, she immediately go and sell all her stock option because she say, "Wow, well, I need to cover a bonus and all the shit, lah." I don't give, I don't give a shit, lah. And then I'm not sexist, lah. I don't. I think female also got, got should be got some good female one, lah. But then, ah. After this round <clears throat> and then this year's results, uh, and then when I saw the Bloomberg interview, uh, wow, jalat. 
the thing I see is, I can see what she's doing is, uh, if you think about it, being very uh, uh, direct and fair is when a woman, you are going to be a CEO of a multinational company, lah, right? A big company. Imagine how many, how many people you need to step on to go up. True or not? Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this one, Darren, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Lah. This one, I think, more related towards corporate. But if you are such a big company and then you are a female CEO, I mean, it's probably only 10 to 1 or 100 to 1 that you have this type of chance to become a this type of role. Lah. Okay, the next thing is, <clears throat> when you transition into a new company, do you think there is a lot of, there is a lot of, uh, 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 culture difference that you need to, to adapt to. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, for sure. Huh? Sure. Huh? So for then sure. if if you are a lady and then there's a lot of difference in change in culture and everything, and then you just come in, what do you need to do in order to secure your position? Divide and conquer law. No, you need to play politics. Lah. Allah. Essentially you need to play politics. Lah. <clears throat> So when a CEO comes in and is intending to play politics for the first two or three years because of her, you know, uh, her, her deficit, lah, that means like, because I, uh, I'm a lady, uh, I need to jia, jia zhong my, my politic power to press everybody down in order to yeah stay la. in the position. Do mm-hmm. you think it's good for the company? Eh? No. This is what I see. Lo. This is what ha- is happening. I feel this one or two years. And then... Added, added all the NLP, a little bit of stuff where when she do the interview at the time, uh, certain certain body language that she's giving the vibe that she's not confident in the company's direction also. Wow, jialala. These three points are, I was seeing. So I, I can tell you these three, these three things uh, in numbers cannot see one. Mm-hmm. Uh, numbers will be looking at the past. Actually, I tell you, if they, they don't tackle all this US, UK, all this, right, they'll continue to fly up one because just China alone can sustain them for another five, I think, three or five more times, five more beggar, lah, at least. Because the growth is really there. But I don't know why they want to go in Gekyang, go in like, want to do so many other things. Lah. I sus- Maybe I also think they also worried that later suddenly China say, <clears throat> I mean like China may believe lah, suddenly China say, eh, okay lah, I don't want to import all the milk already. All the milk must come from China. Ah, or, you know, uh, or uh, whatever lah, or they set some kind of, some kind of policy lah. 50% must be drink, must be drink your own China milk one. You cannot drink outside milk one. Who, who knows lah. But this is also very unlikely. The, the chance is unlikely because the Chinese uh, citizens themselves want to drink ma. and then <clears throat> uh, it's not like education you can just copy in ma. this 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 A1 kind of thing A2 uh, the type of quality type of milk only Australia and New Zealand have something like that hmm. so so all, all these combinations is a bit tricky towards the company la. so this is just my sharing <laughs> yeah this is my sharing of a growth-related kind of company that the moment you see, <clears throat> and you can see from share price one, and I I I might be wrong. I would I might have the risk of being wrong and then see the share price go up and emo yeah. again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I will I may be wrong, but then this is what I feel lah. Uh, sorry, uh, Richard, you say you can see from share price means what lah? It means people start to work down the the company. Yes, because. When, when people, when there are, for example, people like me that sees the same thing, they will apply the multiple of the company lower. Lo. Okay, understand? Ah? Mm, understand. Uh, so it means <clears throat> the company itself growing, coming back to the topic we are talking today is, uh, just now is, the company itself growing, fantastic. The numbers itself, definitely fantastic. But then the growth uh, uh, is no longer in the same trajectory, and it's already. <clears throat> uh, actually, actually, the the numbers. If you go and if you guys go actually read the annual reports and stuff, lah, the numbers is just they miss in terms of uh, I, I can't remember what lah. Is it net profit or something lah? 
that miss a little bit only. Just a little bit only, you know. <laughs> so, so it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> wow, miss a bit, it drop. I don't know how many percent you go and see. Right or not? So, so if if like this, right, then, then investors also so kian, right? they're so, so scared. Uh. Uh, can you imagine if it's dropped further in terms of uh, 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 what do you call it, the growth? Then people will re-evaluate re and then lower down the P multiple again to, to adjust it back. Right? So eventually when the thing was growth into a certain level of peak, then you start to jam. This is uh, what I'm trying to share for this particular story. Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, this bell portal is very tuned one. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, you know bell portal shot the bell portal say what? I also cannot remember what bell portal say. They rated sell. They asked people to sell. Before the report came out. Recently. Uh, in August. Oh. In first of then all, what's the reason? They say the two of the mistake. <laughs> but. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, probably. The market market itself is. Sorry, Richard, you continue. What? I cannot hear. You you continue, you continue. Uh, Target price is what? 12 something. Uh, Oh, okay. Actually, actually, Bell Porter is a very good uh, company. I mean, analysts, they, they, I mean, they come out with very good research, you know, seriously. If you read. I think I, last time when I share, I can't remember. Adrian, you also got see before, right? The Bell Potter yes, reports. Yes, I see before. Yeah, very, very nice, right? Very good, right? Very yes, thorough. Very, nice mm. very thorough. One. Even tell you what is the what is the cow look like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those type of stuff. If we can do research until that kind of quality, this is actually originally where we wanted to do the what ah uh, kind of concept uh, until oh, this the cow look like. Uh. <laughs> the genes, I think, how they separate, yeah. They explain the whole thing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So so you if you can see uh that it, even before the the result came out, Bell Porter already come out with this stuff uh expectation. That means they think that the thing is a very overvalued. But then the entire market is still like wow, so steam. Wow, uh, sure, sure, sure. I think still can grow, still can grow, still can grow. So you can give this stuff 100, 100 PE. 90 P kind of uh, valuation. Uh. Then the yes. moment the result really come out, boom, and drop. And, and just to add on, uh, because I was uh, researching A2 milk, uh, uh, Bell Porter actually supported A2 milk since the, uh, I think 20, I forgot, uh, very long ago. Uh, they, they, from <coughs> about the same they, time. Uh, same about the same time that you bought. One, right? Yes, yes. Uh. And then they support support until now, then suddenly they yeah. changed the yeah. sell. So you can see like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. Adrian can, Adrian can continue. So, yeah. I think, I think you, if you see my screen, you see this book, right? I think this book is another good book I, I would recommend. Because this book, then the number are wrong, right? This book actually tell you how it's more, it's, 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 it's a little bit like MLP, like just what they just say. It's how to decode the CEO communication. Hmm. Basically, I mean, how the... I mean, my explanation just now make makes sense in the audio. Or am I just push cheating myself? <laughs> Do you um, think my just now my 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 things that I say like uh why why and all the lady the CEO as a lady and stuff does it make sense? Uh? I think for me it makes sense uh, because okay. I recently I mean cover of a lot of reading into this this direction uh. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the lady one, I don't know, I didn't see the video, but the one of the things that you said has a very good point is that uh, does the Ang actually want to pay the premium for the infant formula milk? Because most of their marketing spend is actually on America. Then why are they spending so much money there if let's say people don't want to pay for their product? Actually, actually how was that CEO being uh, hired or employed or being headhunted? <laughs> is there a story behind it? Because the previous CEO want to retire already. And the new candidate, how was she found? Headhunted. Headhunted. La. So it's like being parachuted in one. La. Yes, yes. Quantas or so okay. unrelated kind of industry. Or. Can you imagine? Fly planes suddenly sell milk. Or. <laughs> Hello. And then, and then uh, what? Uh, uh, yeah, just want to say what. They want the share price to fly plane or something. <laughs> uh, no, la, but <laughs> immediately. 
I don't know lah. I, I, I actually I forgot what I want to say just now. Just now I want to say something lah. What what lah? Uh, the oh the telltale sign that I see when she's giving the interview in the Bloomberg right, especially explaining the results and everything right. Uh, this is uh learning from NLP stuff lah. She's actually, you know, you know, people have a tendency to either nod their head or shake their head, in agreement or disagreement, unknowingly one Yeah. So so what she did was telling the results and then ask like ask certain questions. What do you think of the growth prospect and everything right so she's most of the time kind of ex- uh, accidentally shaking her head like 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 saying no lah understand then then her explanations of uh, like for example what do you think of the company can go in the next xyz or whatever then she keeps her message very politically correct lah so I, when I see like that I <laughs> <laughs> So sad uh, because uh, so so nice company going going destroyed. Uh, yeah, I, think, I, I, think, I think they I think they ch- want to hold until one one hundred bagger one. <laughs> really? Yes, really one. I really <laughs> want to hold one hundred bagger one. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Uh. <laughs> I very sad uh. But then oh, Richard, no you were griefing. To, uh, you were griefing from <laughs> last two weeks until now. Uh. <laughs> <coughs> no, I I wasn't really. Uh, I didn't really uh, uh, care so much until I see the interview one actually oh, okay. and, then, and then it triggered some some thought process because initially I was like uh, actually to be honest uh, my this company this target for this company is 3 years or 10x I set one when in 2015-2016 if you remember I shared Excel of I want to buy stocks I have to it's mainly why I want to exit, I already write a reason. Ma, so that I'm clear, I want to exit for, I want to exit lah. When I when I want to exit, why I want to exit. So instead of uh, share price or what, normally I set time, man, either three years or, but in this case, I set three years or 10x. Ah. Then I hit 10x. Oh. Then I never sell. Oh. <laughs> because I had x right after 10x. Yeah <laughs> lah. Some more Adrian going like, ah, I know Adrian this. in the face. <laughs> Ah, just okay. greedy. Uh, X coming off. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> So then, my lah. My, I X now become I think eight, eh, ten. I got nine X already. Uh, eight, eight something X ah. No lah, because when you allow, so I foresee next round our small retreat got high dilau. What the fuck? <laughs> this is a realized game. Uh. It's not a paper game already ah. Uh. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, yeah, but 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 uh, something interesting is tomorrow happens results coming out. Uh, as you can see from share price, just happened. Everybody it, seems to be very excited about it. They really really gone up by ten percent. I'm like I'm like what happened ah? Uh? Why ten percent? <laughs> and then the result, I believe the results coming tomorrow night. You know, it's not like tomorrow in the daytime. Eh. Oh, okay, lah. So Somewhere. yeah, I. I feel mm-hmm. there are two reasons. I feel there are two reasons. One is maybe people inside the people already so called accidentally leak out, or they how to say you know you talk to your friend, you talk to your friend, then you somehow know one more. or you know like uh if you guys watch billions before, are you not certain all this type of nonsense? People already mm-hmm. know ma. So <clears throat> I think the result will be quite good lah. It's very unlikely people buy and then it drives the share price up like this simply because of what wow, people want to like uh, flip. You know, some people do it, man. they flip, they buy and then result come out and then they exit. But then the, this, this uh, if you see the chart right during the day one, uh, oh, I, I, because I was looking at it, oh, then after that, go then steady a bit. Oh, then right at the end there, still flying up. Oh. So I you think... So, so far, wise tech. Altium and the PME uh, all, all are now good, good results. Uh. <coughs> and also uh, Afterpay. Ah. Yeah. So, so oh, the Darren. Oh, the Jose. Uh. Jose Liao, uh, Darren. Shock. Uh. I think uh, <coughs> I... Uh, okay. Yeah. asking for Haiti Lao, right? Haiti Lao. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, you should ask from the right person. Yeah, oh, yeah, you should share. 
<laughs> uh, based on proportion, uh, proportion ratio, lor. So who earn eight x? Who earn how many x? Then we divide, lor. All, all, all like that, lah. Okay, okay. Uh, if this video is recorded, right? I need to go and watch back. What are the things that Adrian shared? Ah, mm. yes. Like other man, I also can read. Uh, but I recall the first parts, the first I think ten twenty minutes when Adrian you share. Yeah, uh, there's it's a lot of layman stuff. I think quite, quite interesting. I can't. Remember, I, I think I really fell asleep. Ah, shit. <laughs> you, you, you explain in the middle one. Then I feel nobody talking. Also, I, I think I only hear your voice only. Da 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 da. da. Wow, I think I drowned already. Shit. Then yeah, okay. Uh. Okay, yeah, we are still before time. Anything else to discuss? Actually, wait, Richard, I think this one is only the... I don't I think, know. I, I think all, all, of, all of you know, right? This 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 what is the period show mean? Mm -hmm. so, no, no, need, no need to explain, right? Okay. If, 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 if things just are already, Richard also, also already cover what is the growth company variation we really look like. I see the growth price price into valuation that one. This one. Mm -hmm. Actually, for the value based on unsustainable growth. <clears throat> wow, NEA. Ah. Wow. This one is the green light is more of, more of like current, no? like you say the toast core maturity company that like built to last like Apple, Facebook, this range. Oh? Can I HSBC? Mm. <laughs> then, then the middle line is is a, a little bit la, a little bit la, uh, like 20, 40 percent growth. But yep. this one unsustainable, right? Usually is a, is is a a little bit of spe speculative already. It's more like like uh, like beyond mid, oh. uh, like beyond mid this kind of company. Okay, but well, beyond mid, they are cooperating with KFC or the fuck. <laughs> I mean, if if you're confident enough, you can you can wait. I I I won't buy one. Okay. Anything else? Actually, uh, part of of this uh number training, right? Mm. I also got something want to share regarding to the ITP. Okay. Oh yes, please. Don't get. Nice. So, uh, as of as of all of you know, actually ITP um is a, a a little bit sentiment a little bit sentiment currently. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's not fully because of the force of the result, meaning the un, under underperform consensus analyst mm -hmm. It's not fully of 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 that. Actually, uh, I think if if uh if you guys um. Remember today I said a uh, said uh, I think said I said a uh, yes the article yes he's controlling the Australian yeah that's why if one of the reason why the sentiment uh, got the ITP currently so before we see the result this is uh today I I roughly read, read to the industry lah from from the uh, uh, from the Australian government side one so this one is the past trade record for the <coughs> industry indust industry number. It's okay. okay. As you can see, so far so good, very nice. And then temporary student result on issues. Also, uh, on the high. International student enrollment also on the high. Mm -hmm. And then, all of these international student, uh, for the past year is also is due to the China. And then upcoming is the India and uh, and Nepal. Okay. Then. Actually, this this is the article uh bought some thing sentiment for for this company because because there is a word in the in the government Australian government is you know lah democracy ma, people has has more voice ma. so they have, they are more is a should the government limit foreign student so based on the percentage here you can see uh more more uh, more favor to the government should limit foreign student instead of don't limit so. The, the below sentence, the below, below uh, sentences here, right? 
uh, it's, it's also it's not it's not uh, by by my, my writing one it's also copied from the article one so the upshot is that great international student boom is on borrow time the flow of chinese student is now facing structural decline due to the growing top domestic concern over chinese interference and the strength political relationship between the two nations whereas india and nepal students are facing high entry barrier as well as due access to pr meaning it, it, I can see you guys the full article for this because mainly the article is saying the Chinese form to foreign students may starting to decline. The growth is always sold out. Whereas India and Nepal, right? Uh, mm -hmm. they they restrict them. I mean, it has has a higher barrier of entry to apply the visa. Oh, means they are increasing the rules, rules and regulations together, tightening. Mm. So here you can see this is also another article you can see because the Hong Kong protest quite serious recently. Right? So actually Chinese government also uh, blame on the Australian university influence the student, the Chinese student into democracy teaching. <laughs> okay. Why only target Australia? They also go to UK, right? They also go to Canada, right? Yeah, this way, this way, I, I also did a bit of top process here. Like. I think, okay, first of all, also, uh, this one is the past record. record. You can see the student placement business is very good like, for, for the past. And then this one is the, the, the top university. Uh, they mo most of them are relied right on uh, international student one. Right? Like, like, I think Monash U is one of the top one. Right? Mm. And this one is the most right on international student top the top ten university in Australia. So what I want to uh, uh highlight here, right? This one is the, from the IDP university presentation. You can see result is scoring from the English language testing and then the student placement. Student placement result is accelerated and then English English language English language testing is this. Not not to say so slow down, Stagnant but ah, uh, uh, what what you can see here is actually very very uh, they are they, they indicate the growth from student payment is majority from India, very strong mm. growth in India, and then uh, actually overhead costs also in, include because they quite aggressively in, in invest into the so called the uh, technology platform uh. so. Uh, as well as actually the the test, the test is increased price already. So does the student processing placement right also increase price already? Well, C dollar also drop right. Yeah, that's why you can see this. You can see here constant currency basis is only twenty two percent. So uh, okay, this one is the highlight here. So main customer is from India and China by destination into Australia, Canada, and UK. So 50, if, if the above case, the sentiment is, is really in nah, because this company 58% of revenue is from Australia, is to into Australia. If, if the above sentiment is, is true, nah, so the 58% of revenue is impacted. Nah, if what case, nah. however, you can see uh, uh, this company no longer growth by Australia. They, they recently growth on growth is in Canada, USA and UK. Yeah. So yes. anything you have to I think you have to I mean maybe for one or two years, yes, Australia segment will be impact. But in, in longer term, right, whether this is Canada, UK will be comprised of a larger revenue portion. Or whether this country also also learn from Australia government or want to want to talk about by, by restrict the for an entry so this this is the way uh, where is the future coming in uh, if you think thought this through uh. so and then also uh, I expected the gross margin will be improved in future because currently gross margin right is because of the you can see it's the paper based test uh, but currently they are moving into computer based testing uh. so I foreseen the future margin will be improved which is a good, good thing. 
and also same as the season price margin also will be improved because not right now they are quite aggressive into in, invest into the digital platform where the amortization and depreciation will be reduced in coming years then where the margin will be improved again so balance sheet uh nothing 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 much uh, but so, so far is the uh, because of the company the borrowing is it reduced uh, this this is uh, one of the i think highlight only uh, for balance sheet so and then there is a cash flow implication on the revenue which is recurring can if, if if you see the operating cash flow for from last year to this year right it's kind of like stagnant uh, but because of the uh, change of the revenue recognition this actually this revenue recognition is the one off only because this because the, the chain of the contract asset they recognize the contract because student placement usually is a is a contract based one so they they change the uh, revenue recognition by already mm -hmm. by delaying the recognize the, uh, the the revenue so they that's why this this coming whether will impact the cash flow but if because this is a non-recurring one if you take off right actually uh it's almost it's 112 percent higher uh higher than the wow well, it's 1.12 Meaning the quality of earning is one by one two. It's which, which means uh, it's 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 which growing. Which means uh. that you have, more, you have more cash than your uh, reported net profit, uh? Yes, you have more cash <coughs> than your reported net profit. Which means that cash uh, is actually coming, uh, It's just that um, due to um, accounting wise accounting mm, standards, mm. the profit you didn't realize, uh. But Adrian, cannot be ma. Your contract asset is an upfront payment of twenty four million, uh. One offer. Mm -hmm. No, this one is they are just back. They are just back from 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 last year, and the uh, they because they changed the revenue recognition. Actually, this contract asset is is part is part under, uh, balance sheet one, and also there is an increase in also in the trade is trade is available. Mm. So meaning this 24.1 million right, will be coming in the next year right, in 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 the cash flow. Ah, okay. So conclusion, right? Overseas expansion still in early growth stage. I mean overseas is by the, <laughs> the, the new one. Uh, the keyword. <laughs> the presenter has vested interest. <laughs> ah yo, you are <laughs> vested interest. D Y O T D. Okay, okay, finish already, right? Australia is drawing down growth back, generate. Yeah, Australia may mind is drawing down growth. Back. Future mm -hmm. relies a lot in other English countries as well as the rise of source students from Asia. Uh, well, well, I I just hope they don't <laughs> fuck it up like A2. La. Yeah, this is my concern as well. Richard, any input? Any input from the result? Which That's one? The... IDP? IDP la. Result? Uh, you mean first level or second level thinking? Second level, lah. Uh, wait, first level. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't really read through IDP's result that much, but uh, I didn't feel there is much of a concern, uh, to be honest. <clears throat> because uh, I think the key points for this round of results is actually they are transitioning into the placement business, which is mm. more profitable than the test. So, as you guys may be aware, if you from Malaysia, you go and search, and then you don't know how to apply all the. <sighs> okay, uh, just to give an example, a very good example. Uh, recently, I have experience of dealing with some agents, lah. Okay, mm. so this agent need to settle some things for me in another country, in a very generalistic terms, lah. Agent, you know, lah. Uh, mm. But uh, this this agent need to settle certain things for me in another country, which uh impossible. I'll go there and do one la. So oh, you no, need no. an agent, no matter how ma, right? need an agent. So <clears throat> even though it's very, it's also competitive, as in other agents can provide you with certain solutions, but it is also in the general consensus where actually all the agents in the you know nei as in all kaki lang la. 
So they will all mark up and charge you like shit one. Okay. So it's it's the exact same thing for student placement one. Uh some more now they are like uh even though it's very fragmented, but they are tyloma. So they actually can set the price what is the student placement price should be like. Lah. And furthermore, uh what's the other thing? Ah? Furthermore is okay. Hey. Sorry, lost my train of thought already. Go one more point one. Later, maybe later I tell you lah. But yeah lah, something like that lah. So so, uh, not to I don't feel it's oh, oh. okay. The 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 second one is because they are doing a lot of uh IT IT related stuff right. Even for student placement ma. So I feel <coughs> that's quite an interesting thing lah. Yeah, they so called uh kind of like want to disrupt the student placement business themselves. Something like that. Lah. Yep. Who's mm. saying something? No, lah. I mean, from what I heard from you is that you're saying that the student placement agency has a has a very strong uh, earning power. It means they, yes. can, they can demand. Lah. They can demand. People still are okay. Lah, okay lah. You, know, you know, in student placement, what is their mode? Lah? Their mode is basically they have networks to virtually almost every English, I don't know about other country, lah, but English universities in the world. Mm. So this relationship, imagine if you are uh if you open one shop in Ipo or KL and they're doing student placement uh, you say, Wow, I'm an agent uh. okay lah. You wanna go where? You wanna go Monash? Uh? Can I help you? You wanna go where? You wanna go to uh, Melbourne? Uh? Can I help you? How many university can you handle? Let's say maybe ten or twenty lah. You got the network lah. Uh, uh, because you also need your agent in you need, also need someone there in the country to do it for you, ma, right? Not? So there mm. must be some kind of connections, networks, like quite. Uh, but this IDP, all the networks will go well. And then why they, the network will be strong somehow? Because I'm IDP, ma, my brand will. I, you have to take my test also. Well. So this, this, this uh, network effect, this thing itself is a very, very wide mode already, actually, seriously. The only thing is whether or not Partners, uh, let's do the consumers, which is those people that take the test or those people that want to be placed, uh, they appreciate it or not. As in, they will choose IDP rather than choose other agents, something like that. Lah. But if you are given a plethora of uh, like a buffet of uh, options to choose from, I think no brainer, what? Why not? But they are, they are, but their main customer is not a student, lah. their main customer is the university themselves, right? The university themselves pay them. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, so I don't know if you call it a customer or not. Actually, I feel they are a the supplier even though they're paying them. The customers are actually the uh, parents and students. Uh. Indirectly, is it? Yeah. <clears throat> so then if, if la, let's say if the universities need to fight for market share, if they are, if IDP eventually becomes a main channel, channeling tool for which is why I think the CEO is trying to do uh, because of this online thing. Imagine they are like uh, <clears throat> Mudala. And then, or you have the power to channel uh, the sales to focus on certain uh, university. Then, in order to for me to focus on certain university, you need to buy what? You need to buy like credit, lah, right? Not? You need to make your listing stand out, ma, right? Not? So, if they are able to do that, which means there will be additional in income in terms of advertising or whatsoever. I don't know lah. I'm just ideas that come through my head lah that they can do to ensure that because there are so many universities in the world now, so everyone is competing for the same number of students for every year. So yeah, lah. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. I mean, it's, it's good. It's the cool thing is doesn't matter which university fighting over which, which university. ITB is not bao gat leong Ah, <laughs> Yes, I did. You want, okay. you want of course or Cambridge also can. <coughs> hmm. So so of course the big brands they don't care, lah, but it's the smaller brands that want to fight. Ma. So hmm. then when they fight, they need to give more commission now. If I'm IDP, I will do that, lah, right? You want me to work harder for you, you sick do la, sick do a bit lah. It's same same what same as Facebook what? It's wow, you want to advertise, you keep seeing the stupid spam of <laughs> I keep seeing Kevin Sito's advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. Wow. 
every day I see, oh yeah, oh okay, ask me to join the class, ask me to join the book, buy the buy the reads course or something. Yeah lah. Well, you need to beat right in Facebook. Uh, is this Google, need to Beat right? Is this still recorded? <laughs> no, I, I'm saying I'm yes. not saying it's good or bad. Uh, I'm just saying that Facebook algorithm <laughs> constantly pump it to my it's okay, face. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Let's Anything else, Adrian? Stop, stop uh, the recording. No, no more. Stop yeah. recording, and then we can. <laughs>